All praises to the most high. So tonight's topic is called Jezebel's business model. The first point in Jezebel's business model is Jezebel wants the authority of a man. You understand? Jezebel wants the authority of a man. Watch this. Give me 1 Timothy 2 verse 11. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 11. Let's start this. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 11. Go ahead. Let the woman learn in silence with mm -hmm. all subjection. Read. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. Come on. But to be in silence. So now read that again for me, verse 11. Okay, let me catch it. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 11. Read. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So now this is the Apostle Paul writing to Timothy. He says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Not with some, but with all subjection. Next verse. Go ahead. But I suffer not a woman to teach. So the word suffer means allow. But he says, I allow not a woman to teach. You understand? Read. Nor to usurp authority over the man. Nor to usurp authority over the man. So when he says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, it goes into what? The woman must not be teaching the man. Meaning what? Because she wants to usurp authority over the man. That's why it says she must learn in silence. From who? The man. Not wanting to be in the man's face, in the man's position, wanting to make herself look like a man or equal to one. You understand? Read. But to be in silence. But to be in silence. So why is the Apostle Paul writing to Timothy about this thing? Because this was a problem. You understand? The Apostle Paul wrote this to Timothy because this was the problem in the church. Watch this. Give me that in 1 Timothy 1. This is the reason why the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy about this thing. Because there was a problem in the church. You understand? 1 Timothy 1 and 1. Read that. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 1. Go ahead. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. by the commandments of God, our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. You see that thing? So every, the thing that he's going to say is the commandments by the Most High God and his Son, Jesus the Christ. So he's not speaking out of his own mind. Next verse. Go ahead. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, in the faith, read. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Come on, read. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus. Mm, at what? When I, to abide still at Ephesus. So the Apostle Paul is telling Timothy, say, listen, I want you to abide, meaning what? Remain yet at Ephesus. Okay, read. When I went into Macedonia, that thou might discharge some that they teach no other doctrine. Because in the church at Ephesus, there was a doctrine that was being taught in the church. What was the doctrine? Worshipping of the woman. That was the doctrine that was taught at Ephesus. You understand? So the Apostle Paul is telling Timothy, to make sure that they teach, they teach no other doctrine except the one that I taught you. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs 4. This is the doctrine that the Apostle Paul was teaching. You understand? Read that. Proverbs 4. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 2. Read. For, for I give you good doctrine. Mm -hmm. For seek ye not my law. You see that thing? That's the doctrine that the Apostle Paul was teaching. You understand? The law. The Apostle Paul was teaching the law. The civil law, the moral law, the ceremonial law, the dietary law. You understand? So now in the new, the new covenant under Christ. So what was going on in the church in Ephesus was that why? They, they were teaching the doctrine contrary to the doctrine which is written in this book, which is the laws of God. They were teaching what? Worshipping the woman. You understand? So that's why the apostle Paul is telling Timothy this thing. Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3. You understand? 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 10. Watch this. 
Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 10. Go ahead. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, mm -hmm. manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. You see what the Apostle Paul is telling there, is telling Timothy, said, listen, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, the way I conduct myself, how I live my life is according to what is written in the Bible. So he says, you fully know my doctrine. So make sure that you teach. There must not be any other doctrine from the ones that I taught you. You understand? Contrary to what you've been learned. He's telling him that. So go back to uh, First Timothy now. Chapter 1, verse 3. First Timothy, chapter 1, verse 3. Three. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, mm -hmm. when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. He says, you must charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Make sure that the leaders that you're going to set up, make sure they teach no other doctrine. Why? Because the church at Ephesus, guess what they was teaching? The woman was usurping authority over the man. That's why chapter 2 says what it says. You understand? Watch this. There was the feminist movement going on in the church at Ephesus. There was matriarchy going on in the church at Ephesus. And there was feminism going on at the church at Ephesus. Matriarchy, feminism, worshipping the woman. That is what was going on in the church at Ephesus. You understand? Watch this. Give me Ephesians 1 and 1. Remember, the apostle Paul sent Timothy to say, listen, abide at Ephesus because there's a problem there. You understand? Read that. Ephesians 1 and 1. Let's see who are the Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1. Go ahead. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Mm -hmm. To the saints which are at Ephesus. And to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So now the apostle Paul is writing to the saints which are at Ephesus where he sent Timothy to teach the people to make sure that they don't teach any other doctrine except the one that the apostle Paul taught Timothy to teach the rest of the brothers and sisters. So now watch this. Give me that in um, Psalms 148 verse 14. Let's see who the saints are that were at Ephesus. Okay. Psalms 148 verse 14. Let's read them. Psalms chapter 148 verse 14. Read. He exalted the horn of his people. Mm -hmm. The praise of all his saints. Come on. Even the children of Israel. Even of. Even of the children of Israel. Read. Even of the children of Israel, a people near to him, praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. The David is saying, you better praise the Lord for that thing because this gospel was not given to anybody. You understand? And you are the saints of the Mosai. So you better praise the Lord for that thing. So let's go back to Ephesians 1 and 1. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1. We're going here to deal with who the saints are that the apostle Paul commanded Timothy to remain to abide in Ephesus. You understand? Read that. Ephesians 1 and 1. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1. Read. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, mm -hmm. to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. To the Israelites which are scattered at Ephesus. So that's what the apostle Paul is writing to. And that's who, that's who Timothy had to, was commanded to teach at Ephesus. The Israelites scattered over there. Now watch this. Give me the book of Acts chapter 19 verse 1. Acts 19 verse 1. That's why the apostle Paul wrote to Timothy that no any other doctrine must be taught. So that's why in chapter 2 he says, let the women learn in silence with all subjection. Because the women were disrespecting their husbands. The women was also usurping authority over their husbands. You know, they were not submitting themselves to their husbands. They were being disrespectful and disobedient. They hated law and order and the divine order that the Lord has set up. They hated that thing. You understand? Now read that. Give me that in Acts 19 verse 1. The book of Acts chapter 19 verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, mm -hmm. Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and came finding certain disciples. Read that verse again verse 1. Acts chapter 19 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Ray. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, 
came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. So the apostle Paul, he, get, he, he went, he left, he left Corinth. He says, was it Corinth? Apollos was at Corinth. But Paul passed Corinth. He went to what? He went to Ephesus. He found certain disciples. You understand? One of those disciples was who? Timotheus, meaning Timothy. You understand? Now watch this. Jump down to verse, read verse 24 for me. Okay? Because what was happening in the church at, at, at Ephesus, there was what? There was feminism that was being pushed. You understand? There was matriarchy that was being pushed. Worshipping of the woman was being taught in the church at Ephesus. That's why the apostle Paul had to make sure that he what? He blasts them using Timothy also, and he himself, he wrote to them to blast them. You understand? Watch this. Acts chapter 19, verse 24. Read what you got. Acts chapter 19, verse 24. Read. For a certain man named Demetrius, mm -hmm. a silversmith, which made silver shrine, no small gain unto the craftsmen. Okay, read verse 24 again. He was breaking up. Read verse 24 again. Acts chapter 19, verse 24. Mm -hmm. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, for who? brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. For, for Diana. So now Demetrius was a silversmith. His job was to make shrines. You understand? Was to create shrines. These idols, you understand, for Diana. You understand? It has brought no small gain unto the craftsmen because they were making money creating shrines for Diana. You understand? The goddess of fertility. Okay, come on. Jump down to verse, read verse 26 now. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. Moreover, ye see and hear that not, a, that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods, which are made with hands. So what the apostle Paul was teaching us, he was doing what? He was teaching the people the laws of God that they must repent from worshipping idols. You understand? To worship from worshipping idols, idols and idols that was made by men. All type of idols says, stop worshipping that. And the, the idol that was worshipped in Ephesus was Diana of the Ephesians. You understand? The goddess of fertility, the queen of heaven, Semiramis. She was worshipped. So guess what? That was the problem in Ephesus. Worshipping the woman. That was the problem. Because there's a lot of our forefathers that repented. But there are those, those that did not. You understand? And those that repented, if you jump up, jump up to verse, read verse 17. Okay? Acts chapter 19, verse 17. Read that. Acts chapter 19, verse 17. Read. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. Mm -hmm. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. So, because when the Apostle Paul taught that thou shalt not worship other gods before me, guess what they did? It says the Lord, the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of Christ was magnified. So there are those that believed what the Apostle Paul was teaching. Go ahead. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. You see that? It says, and many that believed, they came to hear the word and confessed. They confessed their sins and showed their deeds. Go ahead. Meaning what? The evil deeds that they were doing. Because the Apostle Paul was teaching them the law. He was teaching them to repent. Right? Many of them also, which use curious arts. Meaning witchcraft. Curious arts is witchcraft. Read. Wrote their books together. Mm -hmm. Big books and about, hold on. When it says curious arts brought their books together, books about witchcraft. Witchcraft books. Read. Wrote their books together and burned them before all men. Mm -hmm. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So what they did was that they had to burn all their books. You understand? They burned all their books. Because remember, they were also selling them books. 
to the people that was interested in black magic. Okay? So the Apostle Paul, what he was doing is what? He was spoiling their fun. He was shutting down all manner of evil that was going on pertaining to idolatry. Particularly, which type of idolatry? Who was they worshipping? Diana. They were worshipping the woman. You understand? Jump down to verse 26 again. Read. Acts chapter 19, verse 26. Come on. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but mm -hmm. almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. So now Demetrius is saying, listen, this guy is gonna is messing up with our business because it's not only at Ephesus that the Apostle Paul is teaching this, but he says throughout all Asia, throughout all Asia Minor. So all those islands, you know, those colonies that Greek, the, those Greek colonies where, where our forefathers were scattered in, guess what the Apostle Paul was doing? He was traveling through different Greek provinces, you understand, those colonies to teach the gospel of Christ. You understand, Iconium, Lystra, you understand, Galatia, okay, Pegas, Pe Pegamos, you understand, Laodicea, okay, Pisidia. He was going to those different places, those different Greek colonies to teach our people the laws. Because guess what? They also was into idolatry, okay? Keep reading, verse 27, read. So that not only this, our craft, is in danger to be set at naught. Because guess but, what? I get when, hold on. When they were traveling to all these different places, the Apostle Paul and those brothers that were helping him, guess what? They would travel by boat. So they were saying, listen, even our craft is going to be in danger. Why? Because they're going to destroy our, our, our property. How are we going to travel from one place to another? You understand? That's why today bring it to today, we are at camp, brothers are mad as hell because the scriptures are coming out, now they are throwing stones at our equipment. They want to destroy our equipment because they hate the laws of God. Read. But also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised. Mm -hmm. That's what the apostle Paul was teaching. Remember in verse 26 says, saying that there be no gods which are made with hands. So that the people want, they must stop worshiping this idol. So now he's saying, listen, he says, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised. Because they could, guess what? They were making shrines for Diana. And Diana had a temple where the people would worship. You understand? So the apostle Paul was teaching against that too. Because it's in the scripts. Right. And her magnificence should be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. Whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. The old world of that time. Because there was worshipping Diana of the Ephesians. Semiramis. Go ahead. And when they heard these things, they were full of wrath. Mm. And cried out saying, great, great is Diana of the Ephesians. You see that thing? It says, they, 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 while the Apostle Paul was teaching this, they were saying, he says, they were full of wrath and cried out. So they were loud, saying, great is Diana of the Ephesians. So today, what does it go into? The, today is 50-50, seven's a girl, you understand? You can do it by yourself. You, I can do bad all by myself. That's what they are crying out now. GBV is all these trigger words that are being said. Misogyny, you understand? So they are, they, we said, no, you are patriarchal. All, all these trigger words that are being used, misogyny, you understand, toxic masculinity, you understand, 50-50, seven's a girl, okay, boss girl, I'm a bad B. All of these things, that's what they are saying right here. Great is Diana of the Ephesians because they are worshiping the woman. So what was happening back then in the church at Ephesus, you understand, and the world of that time in Asia Minor and so forth, guess what? In Corinth, the same thing was going on. You understand? So it is today, 2021, worshipping of the woman. You understand? And the worshipping of the woman, matriarchy, you understand? Feminism is raising up what? Simp men. Men that are simps. You understand? Alpha, um, no, not alpha females. Yeah, raising it raises alpha females and it, and it emasculates the black man. You understand? That's what's going on right now. Watch this. Give, let me show you the, the image of the great goddess Diana. You understand? Great goddess Diana of the Ephesians. 
Let me show you what she looks like. So you see what she looks like. Watch this. Let me share my screen. There's the great goddess Diana right there. Okay. Semiramis, the queen of heaven, the goddess of fertility. You see how many breasts she's got? Yes. That's why today you see our sisters. You see on top, you see on top of the breast is like the top she's wearing. And the, the, breasts, is, the breasts are showing. That's how the sisters are dressing today. Why do you think they dress the way they do? Where they always show their cleavage? Where do you think they get that from? Because they are worshipping the great goddess Diana of the Ephesians. The goddess of fertility. So that every time when you see them, you see what? Sex. Promiscuity. They always have to show off their behinds. They always have to show off their camel toe, camel toe. They always have to show their cleavage off of their chest because they think that's sexy. No, that's whorish behavior. And that's what you are seeing here. They're getting it from here. You see this? Look at it. This is who they are following. That's why today you see our sisters, they're always wearing low cut tops. Yes, they are worshiping the great goddess Diana. Inanna, Semiramis, you understand? The queen of heaven. And that's who the apostle Paul was teaching against because this was the evil that was going on in the church at Ephesus. You understand? Now, let's go back. Let's go out from there. Um, give me the book of Luke chapter 11 verse 27. Watch this. Because during the time of Christ, you were the same thing that was going on. You understand? During the time when Christ walked the earth. Watch this. Luke chapter 11, verse 27. Luke chapter 11, verse 27. Read. Right. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, mm -hmm. a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto them, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, Come on. and the paps which thou hast sucked. You see what this woman is saying to Christ? This woman is saying to Christ, he said, listen, he's... hold on, wait, 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 wait. It says, and said unto him, blessed is the womb that bare thee and the paps which thou hast sucked. You see what's going on here? This woman is, is teaching Christ to say, listen, you must worship the woman. You must worship the box. Yes, worship the vagina. Because he's saying, blessed is the womb that bare thee. You, you see that? And the paps which thou hast sucked, meaning the breastesses. Meaning worship the breast, worship the coochie and my cleavage. That's what this black ashy demon is saying to Christ. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. You see, Christ, you see, he cut it through the heart. He says, Yea, rather, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but to hell with that. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Because this woman was pushing feminism. But she was very specific about what she was saying. Blessed is the womb that bear thee and the pets which thou hast sucked. So she was teaching him to worship who? Semiramis, the queen of heaven. You understand? She was, she was teaching him to worship his mother. Meaning worship the womb and worship the what? Worship the breasts. Isn't that the same thing going on today in the Egyptology community? Those that are practicing Egyptology, they'd be talking about the black woman is God. You see that thing? The black woman is God. She's the queen of heaven. The black woman is the earth. All of that. Listen, we don't read that in the Bible. You understand? We don't read that in the Bible. And that's what this woman was trying to do. So let's go back to great goddess of, you know, Diana of the Ephesians. Because what this woman is saying is the same thing we just read, we just saw here. Okay, look at this. This is what this woman was saying to Christ. Meaning what? Worship this woman, the great goddess of Diana. You see, she's got all these breasts. Everything is showing. She's promiscuous. That's what this woman was telling Christ to do. But Christ, he taught us how to respond to such garbage. He says, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. You understand? But what she was doing, she was trying to um, teach Christ, which is not supposed, she's not supposed to do that. She was usurping, usurping authority over the man. That's what she was doing. Okay? Okay, let me X out of that. 
You understand? Watch this. Now, let's go back to Timothy now. Give me first Timothy 2 verse 11. Let's go back there. Because the Apostle Paul, he was explaining this to Timothy because in chapter 1, there was a problem in Ephesus. Okay? Read that. First Timothy 2 verse 11 again. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 11. Read. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. You see that? Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Because the women were not learning in silence. They had big black mouths. They were running their mouth in the church. And they were not being submissive to their husbands or to the leadership in the church. They were being disrespectful. You understand? Watch this. Next verse. Come on. Verse 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Read. Right? Not to usurp authority over the man. Because that's what but the woman was doing. That's what we was do. That's what the women were doing in the church. Okay, read that verse again, verse 12. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. Read. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Come on. Nor to usurp authority over the man. Mm -hmm. But to be in silence. But to be in silence. So he says, I suffer not a woman to teach. Because that's what they were doing. Like we just saw the example in Luke 11, 27 and 28. This woman was trying to teach Christ. You understand? And what we're reading in Ephesus in the book of Acts, you see how things were. The women were usurp usurping or usurping authority over the men. You understand? They were wanting to be over men. That's what's going on today with these women pastors. Your T.D. Jake's daughter, Sarita, uh, I forgot her name. You understand? She's teaching now. She's been standing in front of the pulpit, running her big black mouth because she don't read the Bible. You understand? Wanina Bynum, Pastor Mukuba, you see them. You understand? There's so many of these women pastors that have no business standing in front of the pulpit because it's no way in the scriptures. You understand? So they are pushing that thing that they was pushing back then. They are doing the same thing today. Okay? Read that thing again. Verse 12. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 12. Read. But I suffer not a woman to teach mm -hmm. nor to usurp authority over the man. Come on. But to be in silence. Next verse. Read. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. You see what the Apostle Paul is telling you? Say, listen, because Adam was first formed, then Eve came later. You understand? So Adam is the, is, is the head. The man is the head, then the woman is the tail. She supports. You understand? She submits herself completely to this man under the order of the Most High God. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Acts 19. Let's go back to Acts chapter 19, verse 1 again. Acts 19, verse 1. Watch this. You know what? Hmm. Yeah, read Acts 19, verse 1. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, mm -hmm. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples. So now the apostle Paul, he says, and he came to, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. So the apostle Paul passed through, where? Corinth. Watch this. Give me Acts 18 verse 1. Acts chapter 18 verse 1. Watch this thing. Hmm. Read that. Acts chapter 18 verse 1. Come on. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and mm -hmm. came to Corinth. So the apostle Paul, he was he, he left Athens, he went to Corinth. Now watch watch this. Keep reading. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, mm -hmm. born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, come with on. his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius commanded all Jews to, to depart from Rome and came unto them. So now what you are seeing here is that you've got the Apostle Paul at Corinth. He says he found a certain Jew named Aquila with his wife Priscilla. Now read verse 4. Watch this. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. And he reasoned and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and Greeks. So now the Apostle Paul is at Corinth. There are Jews at Corinth. You understand? And he went into the synagogue of the Jews at Corinth to do what? 
to persuade them, to teach them about Christ. Now watch this. Read verse 8 now. Come on. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue. So this believed... was the leader. This was he was the leader at Ephesus, at this in the synagogues at, at, at I mean at Corinth. Excuse me. Crispus was the chief ruler of the synagogues at Corinth. Okay, come on. Verse Believe 8 again. On the Lord. Read verse Excellent. 8 again. 18 verse 8. Read. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. Mm -hmm. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. You see that thing? It says many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. You see in verse 4, it says he went into the synagogue of the Jews. In chapter 2, it says a certain Jew named Aquila with his wife Priscilla. Verse 8 is calling them the Corinthians because they dwelled at Corinth. You see that thing? Now watch this. Now give me 1 Corinthians, okay? Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Because there was a problem at Corinth. That's why the apostle will pass there. What was the problem at Corinth? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. This was the problem, okay? Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. Great. For God is not the author of confusion, mm -hmm. but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So now the Apostle Paul is telling the church at Corinth, the, which are called the Corinthians, you understand? He said, listen, God is not the author of confusion. The most High God did not author confusion in this Bible, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. We read the saints in Psalms 148 verse 14. In all the churches of the Israelites, the Lord is not the author of confusion. Because this is bar of peace. Watch this. Because now he's going to explain to what? Because there was a problem when it comes to men and women relationships. There was disorder in marriages in the church of Corinth at Ephesus. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse... Hmm, let me see what I want here. Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 15. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 15. Read. But if the unbelieving depart, mm -hmm. let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such case. Read. But God hath called us to peace. So now he's going into the believing and unbelieving spouses. The unbelieving spouses that do not want to apply the laws of God is as if they depart, the Lord is saying, you might you let them go. You understand? He says, the brother or sister is not under bondage, meaning what? Under the bond of marriage in such cases. But God has called us to peace. Because what was the problem in Corinth? Watch this. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Wisdom of Solomon 14 verse 12. Okay, read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 verse 12. Read. Read. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Mm -hmm. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. You see that thing? The, 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 what, the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. And the invention of these idols was the corruption of life. What, what life was corrupted? Read verse, read verse 24. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon 14, 24. Watch this. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 24. Come on. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. You see, that was the problem. Because idolatry, what was the, who was the idol in these marriages that we're reading about in the book of First Corinthians, Corinthians at Ephesus? What was the problem in the marriages? The woman was being worshipped. You understand? Idolatry, spiritual fornication. There was worshipping the woman. That's why it says they kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. Because when idolatry enters in, guess what? The marriage is in disarray. You understand? Idolatry, defiling of souls, the corruption of the mind. Okay, come on. But either one slew another traitorously mm -hmm. or grieved him by adultery. You see that thing? Adultery, spiritual fornication. 
it says, it says, but either one slew another traitorously, meaning what? There was deception, there was backstabbing, you couldn't trust nobody, your wife couldn't, you couldn't trust your wife because there was worshipping of the woman. You understand? Watch this. Or grieved him by adultery, spiritual fornication. You understand? Watch this. Keep going. So that there reigned in all men without exception, blood, mm -hmm. manslaughter, Read. theft, dissimulation, and dissimulation, corruption, unfaithfulness, tumults, perjury. So they were breaking the commandments of the Most High God because the marriage was no longer, our, the, 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 the marriage was no longer clean. The marriage was, un, was defiled. It was no longer undefiled. It was defiled. It was no longer honorable. Like we read about in Hebrews 13 verse 4. The marriage was no longer honorable because idolatry entered in. The worshipping of the woman. Okay, come on. Verse 26. Watch this. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. Disquieting of good men. Do you see that? Forgetfulness. You see that part? Disquieting of good men. Destruction of good men. Go ahead. Forgetfulness of good turns. The good turns is what? The order of marriage, that man is the head, woman must follow. That order was disrupted because of idolatry, worshipping of the woman, because now the woman wanted the man to chase after her, not the other way around. You understand? Read. Defiling of souls. Defiling of souls, the corruption of life. Okay, come on. Changing of kind. Changing of kind, you understand? Men wanting to be women, when women wanting to be men. But most importantly, what was going on is that women wanted the position of the men. They wanted to be equal or above them. That's why the Apostle Paul said to Timothy, listen, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the men, but to be in silence. Because that was going on. So that's why it says changing of kind. Read. Disorder in marriages. That's it right there. Disorder in marriages. There was no longer order in the church because the church began in your house. You represent Christ in the house. She represents the disciple. You understand? That's how you, the church begins in your house. That's why it says disorder in marriages. Why? Because the woman wanted to be worshipped. That was the problem. Okay, come on. Adultery and shameless uncleanness. You see that? Women, women wanting to be men. That's shameless uncleanness. You understand? Uh, lesbianism was going on, so it is today. Feminism was going on, so it is today. Matriarchy was going on, so it is today. Worshipping of the woman was going on, so it is today. Toxic masculinity. They hated the men. You understand? And they hated the men, the order that the men represents. They hated the position that God put the men in. So it is today. You see it in the camp too. Don't get it twisted. Because a lot of the times you might think we're talking about the sisters in the world. Mm -mm. We're also talking about the sisters in the camp. There's some Jezebels online. Understand that. Watch this. Now let's go back to 1 Corinthians. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 33. Read that thing for me again. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 33. Read. For God is not the author of confusion, mm -hmm. but of peace, as Read. in all churches of the saints. You see that? The most High God is not the author of confusion. Because the reason why the Lord is saying what he's saying, because he's going to explain to you why the Apostle Paul is using the word confusion. Watch the next verse. Because remember what we read in, in Wisdom of Solomon. It says disorder in marriages. That means confusion in the marriage. The woman, she did not want to submit herself to the role that God gave her. Next verse. Come on. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Hold on a second. Isn't this the same thing that the Apostle Paul told Timothy? That's the same thing. That, that's the evil that was going on at Ephesus. Because the women did not want to keep silence in the church. They also say, I also want to have a voice. I want to have an opinion. You know, I also have a right. I have rights. You understand? So they're using democratic system in the church. There's no democracy in this Bible. The Bible is not the book of democracy. It's the book of law and order and judgment. You understand? So that's what they was trying to do. We also want to have a voice. 
We want to say something. You know, I got something to say. Yeah, I don't agree with that. You see that? That is what was going on at Ephesus. That was what is going on. That's what's going on here in the church of Corinth. You understand? Read it again. Verse 34. Come on. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. Come on. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Mm -hmm. For it is not permitted unto them. Come on. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Read. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also said the law. You see that part right there? It says, because it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also said the law. So what you want to notice here, the Apostle Paul in verse 33, he's saying, listen, the Lord is, God is not the author of confusion. Then the next verse, it says, let your women keep silence in the churches. Because who brings confusion in the church is mainly who? The women. Who brings confusion in the marriage is mainly the women because philosophies, mainly they come through who? The women. Because that's the philosophies, the destruction of the first marriage in Genesis of Adam and Eve, the evil came through who? Eve. She brought philosophies to Adam. You understand? And she brought confusion to Adam because now she started to teach Adam instead of the other way around. You saw the you something authority over the man again. So that's what's going on today. Sisters with long dresses and fringes on, but inwardly they are what? They are men. Spiritually, they behave like men. They want the same powers that God gave to the men. You understand? They have those that they have that e that that imaginary penis in their head. You see that thing? That's what's going on. They are mainly women. Mainly women. What, read that again, verse 34. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. Mm -hmm. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Read. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Come on. But they, they, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Says, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Let's go to Genesis 3.16. I really like that thing. They are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. You notice the apostle Paul keep reminding us of what happened in the past. He says, don't forget. But the black man will always be forgetting. Don't forget, brothers. You understand? Genesis 3 verse 16. Read that. Genesis chapter 3 verse 16. Read. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Mm -hmm. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. Come on. And he shall rule over thee. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, the most that God is now is, is, is commanding the woman. He said, listen, I'm going to greatly, greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. So your sorrow and your conception, that goes into what? your child labor pains, your menstrual periods every month. You understand? He said, the Lord says, I'm going to greatly multiply them. Your sorrow in terms of your, your menstrual cycles and your conception, child labor pains. You understand? In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. You understand? And thy desire shall be to thy husband and he, your husband, shall rule over thee in all things, in everything. You understand? Subject in all subjection. Guess what? Your desire, your desire to what to learn, your desire if you want to have sex, it must, you must go to your husband for that. You understand? You want to learn, go to your husband for that. You want anything and everything, you must go to your husband in a marriage. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying right there. And the sisters that are not married, your desire should be what? The leaders that the Lord said over you. Not in sex. The hell is this? We'll talk about all the other stuff. You understand? To learn how to be a woman, how to get yourself right, sister, how to move correctly and so forth. You need what? Go to leadership, the leaders, to teach you how to be a woman, how to prepare yourself for marriage and so forth. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying. That's why a lot of you sisters, you have painful menstrual cramps. Why? Because you want the authority of a man. You are not submitting, you have not fully submitted yourself to the what? To the order that God gave you 
You understand? To play your role. Know your role. Stay in your lane. That's why there's disorder in marriages now. Why? Because women don't want to stay in their lane. The role that God gave them. That's a command. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Timothy real quick. Okay? Give me that in First Timothy. It goes into the order of men. Because what the Apostle Paul said in First Corinthians is the same thing that, I, that Moses said in Genesis. Give me that in um, 1 Timothy chapter 3, okay, verse 5. Watch this. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Go ahead. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, mm. how shall he take care of the church of God? You see that part right there? It says, if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Guess what? You must be able to, you see, you must rule. God gave the man power to rule his house. God gave the man power to rule his house. That means he has the last word. Because in Babylon, you understand, under Europe, Europe, these European Western cultures, they've taught the black woman to always have the last word. But I also have, I have something to say. No, sister, be quiet. You understand? Fall in line. Stay in your lane. Stay in the spirit, sis. They always want to have the last word. Why? Because they are not in the scriptures. They are not in the Bible. You understand? Read that thing again. And I know you, brothers, don't be, don't be afraid, brothers. The Lord is with you. Read verse 5 again. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Come on. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, mm -hmm. how shall he take care of the church of God? How are you going to be able to take care of the nation of Israel? To lead the nation of Israel? You will not. Why? Because you don't know how to rule your own wife. You don't know how to rule your wife, your children. How? What makes you think you're going to be able to command the nation of Israel? You will not be able to do that. You understand? That's why in the churches, you've, you've got what? You've got effeminate men. You've got alpha females. They are the ones that are sitting standing in the pulpit. Even the pastor is running the whole thing. The woman is the one that is controlling him from the background. She's manipulating him. You understand? That house is not in order. Neither is the church. Okay? Watch this. Go back to 1 Corinthians. Okay? Chapter 14, verse 34 again. 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 34. Read. Let your women keep silent in the churches, mm -hmm. for it is not permitted unto them to speak. Come on. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. The law we read in Genesis 3.16, the same thing that the Apostle Paul explained in 1 Timothy 3 verse 5. Next verse. Come on. And if they will learn anything. If they will what? And if they will learn anything. If they will learn, they will learn, they will learn. That's what it says, your desire shall be to thy husband. Meaning your desire to learn. If they will learn anything, what must happen? And if they will learn anything, mm -hmm. let them ask their husbands at home. You see that thing? If they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. Go ahead. For it is a shame, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. For because it's a shame. It's a shame for women to run their mouth in the church. Usurping authority over the men. The law says that's a shame. And sisters, they are shameless. They don't want to obey this. They don't want to humble down. They be hiding. I see it. You understand? I talk to you. I can pick it up quickly. You sister, you full of BS. You don't want to give the commandments. But you are hiding behind that long dress. But you don't believe the scripts. You understand? But you say you want to be a virtuous woman. You want to be a daughter of, uh, a daughter of Zion. Mm -mm. You will not be able to ascend into that virtuous woman if you don't obey or agree with what we just read. You understand? Because why? Because that's Jezebel's business model. She wants to have the authority of a man. But you remember what he says. He says, if they will learn anything, their desire to learn is as let them ask their husbands at home. Watch this. Let me show you what happened. Give me Jeremiah 31, 22. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22. Go ahead. How long would thou go about, O mm. thou backsliding daughter? Read. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. Mm. A woman shall compass a man. 
But what you want to notice about this verse is it says, how long will thou go? It says, how long will thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? How did the black women backslide? She what? She changed her role. She rejected the role that God gave her. She said, mm -mm, I want to be equal or above this man. That's how you decided to backslide. But guess what? Today, that thing is glorified. 50-50, you know, I'm a bad B. I'm a boss. I'm a this. That's because you are backsliding. You are backsliding. And now left is right, right is wrong. You understand? The things that are upright according to the scriptures, they are looked at as evil. And the people, the, the men that are pushing that, they are looked at as, no, you hate women. You are misogynist. You are misogynistic. You are you know, toxic masculinity. All of that BS, all those are trigger words to stop the simps from, from to, uh, to keep the simps in check and to stop the alpha males that go to camp to the streets to put the nation in order with the laws of God. You understand? Read that again, verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 22. Come on. How long would thou go about, O thou mm -hmm. backsliding daughter? Read. For the Lord had created a new thing in the earth. Mm -hmm. A woman shall compass a man. He says, the Lord had created a new thing in the, in the earth. So women being equal or above the man, that's a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Meaning what? They're going to usurp authority over the man. That's what Jeremiah is saying right there. The proof of that, let's go back to the past. Jeremiah, give me Genesis 3 verse 6. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. You see, this topic of marriage will never grow old. Understand that thing. Genesis 3 verse 6. I want to show you how a woman usurp authority over the man. Watch this. Genesis 3 verse 6. Genesis chapter 3 verse 6. Come on. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food mm -hmm. and that it was a pleasant to the eyes Ray. and a tree to be desired to make one wise, Come on. she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Now that's the key right there. It says, and what? And gave also unto her husband and he did eat. So Eve... Now the roles are reversed because remember the Lord says there will there'll be a new thing in the earth. A woman will compass a man. That's what Eve is doing here. Eve is teaching Adam now. That's out of order. That's what's going on today in the Christian church. You see the black woman in the, in the pulpit teaching the men, teaching the congregation. You understand? That's out of order because that's, what, that's where she gets it from. She gets it from her foremother that rebelled against Adam. So where did she learn that from? She learned that from the white man. The same spirit in the garden, the same spirit today, the, the devil. You understand? So now the roles are reversed. Now Eve is coming to Adam to teach Adam. You're usurping authority over Adam. You understand? Not being in silence, not being in subjection to Adam, not respecting and understanding the role that God set for her. You understand that? Jump down to verse 17. Go ahead. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. You see that thing? Because you have listened to your wife. You see, the most of God was dealing with Adam directly. So what happened is that Adam, because the roles now are reversed, now Adam decided to listen to his woman. The law says, because of that, it says, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of your wife. Now you're allowing your wife to teach you. What the hell is this? You understand? That's not what I taught you, Adam. I gave you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I gave you power to rule every bit of God's creation. Adam, did, mm -mm. now the roles are reversed now. You understand? Read again, verse 17. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, hey? and hast eaten of the tree, of the which, of which I commanded thee, say, thou shalt not eat of it. You see that part? Cursed. Hold on. It says, listen, it says, and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Because guess what? Eve learned philosophies. You understand? She learned philosophies and witchcraft from the serpent. And now she's bringing that same wisdom and that same 
destructive wisdom and knowledge to Adam. That's the same thing today. That's why you see our sisters today, they are into horoscopes, they are into astrology, you understand? They are into palm reading, they are into bukoko. You see a lot of them, these sisters, barbara twasa. You understand? Barikiri sangoma. You understand that? A lot of these sisters, to, you see in the celebrity arena, you even, there was a sister that came to camp. We were teaching in Thessalonica. She came there, she said, no, yeah, now, you know, she's a spiritual person. You know, she takes demons from people. But guess what? When she was teaching at camp, the things that she was doing, she was doing things like, you know, the demons was just jumping. She had demons. So when we're teaching the law that says, you cannot come here and teach us. You cannot come here. That's out of order. Guess what? The demons in there was being aggravated. The type of sounds she was making. Uh, she was doing all sorts of demonic stuff. Not so, not even a day. It then didn't go by. A couple of hours, she came back. She was wearing these type of pants. Everything was showing. She was wearing this type of top. Everything was showing. And she's got a son now. You see that thing? Everything was showing. It, everything was see-through. And she didn't even go past us. She passed over there. You understand? And she talking about, no, she's a healer. She goes around. She be healing people with water. Witchcraft. You understand? And that's the thing that she was trying to bring to us at camp. And that's what Eve did. She brought evil and these philosophies and astrology and all this stuff, palm reading and so forth. You understand? Fortune, whatever. All of that stuff to Adam. Okay. Read verse 17 again. One more again. Genesis chapter 17. Go ahead. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, mm -hmm. and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Ray. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. He says, now because you listen to your wife, now, Adam, I'm going to make life difficult for you now. Life is going to be so hard for you. He says, curse is the ground for thy sake. When everything was growing willingly, there was no weeds, there was no nothing. You know what? The Lord also gave Adam a job. He gave him a place to stay, gave him a job. Guess what? Now, Adam has to work extra, extra hard just to end, just to, just to, you know, just to end ends me. Something simple. That's why we do what? We work six to six. Some of some of our brothers that are doing night night shift. You understand? You are working long hours. Why? Because you listen to your woman. You listen to that Jezebel, big black mouth woman. That's why now things are so hard for us. Next verse. Go ahead. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Ray. And thou shalt eat, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. You see what he's saying? He said, thorns also and thistles shall eat, meaning the ground, bring forth to thee. That's why when you plant now, you see there's weeds coming out of nowhere. Where do they come from? The Lord is doing that. Because of what? You listen to your wife. Instead of listening to the Most High, you listen to your wife coming with doctrines and philosophies to bring confusion in the marriage. You understand? Now watch this. Give me that in 1 Kings 21. You know what I want. You know, how can I leave this one out? This Jezebel woman, the actual demon herself. First Kings 21, verse 5. Read that for me. First Kings 21, verse 5. Read. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, mm -hmm. Why is thy spirit sad at that thou eatest no bread? Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? Because no, Jezebel is talking to Ahab. Ahab was a simp of note. He was a simp of note. He went to a brother. You understand? Naboth, he had a vineyard. He wanted, his, he wanted his neighbor's vineyard. And he said, no, that's the vineyard that my forefathers left me for an inheritance. So when he said no, he came home crying to his wife because he was a simp. You understand? Read verse 5 again. First Kings chapter 1 verse 5. Come on. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? Why are you so sad that you don't even want to, you don't even want to eat? Okay, jump down to verse 7 now. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, 
Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Don't you rule the God? Don't you? Aren't you the king? You the grand puba. Aren't you the king of Israel? You understand? Northern kingdom. Read on. Arise on. and eat bread. Mm -hmm. And let thine hearts be merry. Go ahead. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. He says, I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So you notice here like Ahab is behaving like a child. You understand? He is a childish man. He's a man child. Because it says, arise and eat bread. Because he didn't want to eat bread. You understand? He was upset so much so that he didn't want to eat. So now, Jezebel, his wife, which is his mother, really, you know, he's a, he's a wife, but he's really acting like his, uh, his mother. She's saying, listen, you ever seen, you ever seen those parents that um, they, they are, their kids don't want to eat? And the parent, the, the mothers, the, the single parent households, the mother will be saying, come little, no, 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 no. Here, yeah, no, 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 you no, no. Listen, that's what's going on. That's what's happening here. You understand? Jezebel is actually, you know, doing that to his, to her husband, Ahab, the king of Israel. You understand? Then it says, you saw, arise and eat bread and let thine heart be merry. Oh, no, no. Are you happy now? You see, that's a big boy. You see, that's a big smile now. No, 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 no. That's what's going on here. You understand? Read. He says, I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. You see, Jezebels, they love the authority of a man. That's one of Jezebel's business models. They want the authority of a man. You understand? Now, keep reading. Verse 8. Watch this. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. Come on. And sealed them with his seal. You see that part right and there? Hold on. She wrote letters in Ahab's name. She likes to name drop. You understand? You be sisters be talking to other sisters or other brothers. No, leadership said this. Let's don't be using my name in vain. The hell is this? That's what Jezebel was doing. It says she wrote letters in Ahab's name. If I did not give you the command, don't come here and say, no, leadership said this. Mm -mm, I don't want to hear that. It says, so she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal. Why did she have to do that? Because she wanted to make it look that leadership is the one that's saying, do this. When it's really had that one, that thing done. You see that thing? That's what Jezebel was doing. She likes to name drop. You understand? Because she likes power and position and fame and authority. Okay, go ahead. And sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in, this, in his city. Dwelling with Naboth. You see that? It says, and send the letters unto the let. It says what? And send the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. Meaning, the people that were dwelling with Naboth. Why? Because she wanted Naboth to hear this. That this thing is going on. Because you did not want to give us your vineyard for money. You see that thing? That's the thing right there. Okay? Now watch this. Hmm. Hmm. Read the next verse. Yeah, I don't want to say nothing. Read verse 9. Okay, let me not do don't let me not do that. Let me not say nothing. Read verse 9 for me. Yeah. Come on. First Kings chapter verse 1, nine. verse 9. Read. And she wrote in the letters saying, mm -hmm. Proclaim me fast. Proclaim me fast. No, you see what she's saying? Pro meaning what? She appears righteous. Jezebel appears righteous. You see that thing? Long dresses. They be putting the head wrap on and so forth and all, but inwardly they are full of deceit. That's Jezebel right there. You understand? Read verse 9 again. First Kings chapter 1, verse 9. Go ahead. And she wrote in the letter saying, mm -hmm. Proclaim me first. Go ahead. And set Naboth on high among the people. Meaning what? Make Naboth look bad among the people. That's why it says. They sent letters to the elders and nobles that were in his city, in Naboth's city, dwelling with Naboth. So that they set Naboth on high among the people, meaning what? They are setting him up. They are setting Naboth up. They are setting this brother up. You understand? Read verse 10. Come on. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. And said two men 
sons of Belial. Of the devil. Him, sons of Belial, the devil. Read on. To bear witness against him, saying. You, you see that thing? These are false witnesses now. Remember, these are simps. Jezebel always has followers. Simps walking around here. Around here. She likes that. You understand? Read. Saying, thou didst blaspheme God and the king. Mm -hmm. And then carry him out and stone him that he may die. You see that thing? You see, Jezebel is dangerous also. Jezebel is dangerous. Jezebel will, set, put, will, will hire hitmen to kill you. Because that's what happened during the time of Elijah. You understand? She wanted to do that to Elijah. Jezebel. But what I'm trying to show you is that Jezebel likes the authority of the man. She likes that thing. You understand? If she don't get it, she will twitch like a robot. She will rebel in any way she can. Any instruction that you give Jezebel, she will rebel. And that rebellious is very subtle. It takes the man of the Lord that is in this Bible to see. That's Jezebel right there. Jezebel is hiding behind this thing. She's hiding right there. You give her this instruction, she'll give you that excuse. You give her this particular instruction, she'll give you that excuse. What, I, what is she she's telling you? I'm Jezebel, but I'm going to hide behind my excuses. And the excuses, they'll make it, they'll sell, they make it sound so nice. Jezebel in hiding. So you really have to listen to what they say to be able to sift Jezebel out. Because if you sift Jezebel out, guess what? She got you, she got her eye on you. And it's not the good eye, it's an evil eye. From that day, well, you better understand, she got an evil eye towards you. You see, Jezebel, they are very disrespectful, but they do it in a subtle way. They hate instruction. They hate to follow command. They hate to submit. You understand? They will twitch like a robot. Listen, until the sun goes, listen, listen. They don't want to hear nothing, but they do it in a subtle way. And if you are stubborn enough to sit on them, guess what? You are creating an enemy out of you, out of Jezebel. I'm telling you now. I need you brothers to understand. Me, I know I'm already on the hit list. I don't give a damn about that. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in John 4, verse 39. Mm -hmm. John 4, verse 39. Watch this thing. This is the Samaritan woman. After she spoke with Christ, now she went back to, to the people of Samaria to explain to them what had happened. The conversation that took place when she was speaking with the Messiah. Watch this. Give me that in John 4, 39. I'm going to show you our forefathers. Yes, they were in Northern Kingdom, but they had the spirit of the Lord on them. You understand? Watch this. There's things that they were able to pick up in the spirit. John 4, verse 39. Read what you got. John chapter 4, verse 39. Come on. And many of the Samaritans that of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman. Which mm -hmm. testified. The woman, the woman, this is the Samaritan woman. Okay, come on. Which testified, he told me all that I ever did. That ever I did. So now she's telling them what Christ said to her. Okay, watch this. Next verse. Read on. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, mm -hmm. they besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode there two days. So now remember, the, Christ went to the land of Samaria. You understand? That's why he went over there first. And the first person she, he encountered was the Samaritan woman. And he went into Galilee. You understand? To teach. Now, what you are seeing here says, the people of Samaria, they spoke to the Samaritan woman first. Then after that, guess what? Um, they, they saw Christ. You understand? And he was teaching them the gospel. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. And many more believed because of his own word. Stop right there. You see that part right there? And many more believed because of his own word. They didn't just take what the woman was saying. And you brothers are like that. You just believe anything and everything that sister B is saying to you. Don't believe nothing. Me, I don't trust anything that bleeds every month, that bleeds, but they never die. Me, I don't believe that. I'm very suspicious. Mm -mm. I'll use the scriptures to deal with things. You understand? There's no animal that bleeds every month, but they never die. I've never seen that. <laughs> You understand? But you can read that. You can read the Bible. You'll find one. 
I'm just going to leave it there. Read verse 41 again. Read what you got. Come on. John, I know John, already, John. like now, they are just saying these black, these big black nigger right here. Okay, that's okay. I love you, sis sisters. You know, it's all out of love. Read verse 41 again. Come on. John chapter 4, verse 41. Read. And many more believed because of his own word. Many more believe, meaning the Samaritans believed because of his own word. He, what is the, who is the his? Christ. Next verse. Come on. And said unto the woman, mm. now we believe. No, huh? Not because of thy saying. You see that part right there? <laughs> it says, now we believe. Not because of thy saying. We don't believe because you're saying it. Mm -mm. We not believe because you are saying it. Watch the next. Come on. Next part of that verse. For we have heard him ourselves. You see that thing? For we have heard him ourselves. That's why verse 41 says, and many more believe because of his own word. He says, because we, for, for, we had, for we have heard him ourselves. We heard him ourselves. Not because of what you said, but because we heard him say out of his own mouth. Read. And know that this is indeed the Christ, the mm -hmm. savior of the world. The savior of the 12 tribes of Israel. You see that part, right? So they even they, they even in their wickedness, because they were in, in idolatry and so forth. Guess what? But they even in their week, they still understood the order of the household. That don't just take anything that the woman says, because guess what? They didn't just want to take that. They said, No, mm, we we not we don't now we believe you, not because of what you said, but because we had it for ourselves. You see that thing? The proof of that, watch this. Give me that in Acts chapter 17. Okay, give me Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Read that. Acts chapter 17, verse 11. Read. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Mm -hmm. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Come on, meaning what? They, did, they were what? They were in subjection. To the order that the Lord has set up. Go ahead. And search the scriptures daily. You see that thing? They Hold on. They search the scriptures daily. Go ahead. Whether those things were so. They wanted to see it for themselves. Next verse. Come on. Therefore, many of them believed. Mm -hmm. Also of honorable women, which were Greeks. And of men, not a few. You see that thing? It says, therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks. Meaning what? They, were, they grew up in Greek customs. You understand? They identified themselves as Greeks, but they were Israelites. It says, and of men, not a few. But the key I want to show you is that it says also of honorable women. What made these women honorable? One of the things that made these on women honorable is because they understood their order and their role. You understand? They did not usurp authority over the men. That's why it says they were honorable women. One of the things that make women honorable is what? Marriage. Because now you are not a headless chicken. Because a lot of these sisters out, the, out in the world, they are headless chicken because they have not hedge over there. They don't have a hedge over them. You ever seen a headless chicken? They just go everywhere haphazard. There's no order. There's no structure. Everything is a mess. You understand? And they hide behind the degrees. They hide behind the job. They hide behind the big pays. They hide behind their looks and so forth. But they are still a headless chicken. You understand? They are still a headless chicken. So guess what? What makes that, what brings honor to that sister is marriage, is a hedge. Whether it be a father, whether it be an uncle, be a man of the law that knows the scriptures, or the husband. You understand? Because that's how you become a not you you don't be that's how you become an honorable woman not that headless chicken that is loose you understand watch this give me jeremiah 44 verse 15 i'm still dealing with one of the characteristics of the first characteristics of of jezebel's business model is that she what she loves the authority of a man okay jeremiah 44 verse 15 read that Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 15. Go ahead. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods. Stop right there. Now, what you want to see here is that is as, 
than all the men which knew. So these were simps. Our forefathers, which were simps, they knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, idolatry. So there was a disorder. There was disorder in these marriages here. You understand? The men were in the back carrying their women's handbags and their supplies to worship all these idols and to burn incense unto them. And the women were in the forefront leading the charge. There was disorder in these marriages. Okay, read that again, verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 15. Come on. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, mm -hmm. and all the women that stood by, Stop right a there. great multitude. Hold on. It says, the men that which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods. So you had men that knew, that know, that knew that their wives are burning incense unto other gods, worshiping idols, idolatry. That means the women were running the houses. The women were in the front. You sought to be, you sought to be authority over the men. You understand? Telling the men to sit down and shut up. Okay? And all the women that stood by, meaning the women that supported them, they didn't say nothing. Like you see today, black women don't hold other black women accountable. They just keep quiet. Yes, girl, just do it, girl. You understand? They support each other in the evil and wickedness. They don't, they don't correct one another when they disrespect their fathers and brothers, their husbands. They don't correct each other. You understand? Read. A great multitude, mm -hmm. even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, Read. in Pathros, mm -hmm. answered Jeremiah saying, Now they're going to respond to they're going to respond to what Jeremiah, because Jeremiah was teaching the law. So now they're going to respond to Jeremiah. Watch this. Now you had you had you have effeminate males, you had alpha females, all of which are speaking the same language. You understand? But the one that is leading the charge is the black woman. Okay, come on. Verse 16. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. You see that? Because they knew what Jeremiah was teaching. It says, listen, as for the word that thou, thou hast spoken unto us. So they know that Jeremiah is the one that's speaking the word, is teaching them. It says, in the name of the Lord. So they knew what he was teaching. He was, he was not speaking his own words. He was teaching the laws of God. So it is today. Our sisters, they know what we are bringing out is what is written in the Bible, but they just ignore them. He says, we will not hearken unto you. And they're not going to tell you straight up, I don't want to hear that. No, they will make excuses. No, but these are women pets. No, but I, I agree with the scriptures. You understand? No, but I, 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 I apply it, but I study. No, but you don't apply because your actions don't equal what you say. You see that thing? Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. You see that emotions. We will rely on our feelings and our, on our emotions, and we will use our feelings, our emotions, our tears. We're going to use the way we look. We're going to use our bodies. We're going to use trigger words to stop you from telling us what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven. You see that thing? Mm, worshiping the woman. He says, listen, you're not going to tell us nothing. We're still going to sacrifice unto, the, unto Diana. Because they, were, they didn't call it Diana at this point. They call it the queen of heaven. But we just showed in the pictures who the queen of heaven is. Semiramis, Diana of the Ephesians. That's the same demon right here. You understand? The goddess of fertility. Because who was ruling the thing? Who was running the show? The women. And they were running the show by their cleavage. They were running the show by their womb, their vaginas, their camel's toe, their, their hot pants, their leggings, their mini skirts, their bum shorts. You understand? The skirts that have slits on the side. That's how they were ruling the men. You understand? And the men, may be, where the men were being controlled by the coochie. You see that thing? Hmm. Go ahead. And to pour out drink offerings unto her. Uh -huh. as, as we have done. Meaning that we've been doing this and we're going to continue to do it. Read. As we have done and our fathers, no, our no, king. As we, no, no, it says, as we have done, we and our fathers, come on. As we have done 
we and our fathers and kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. You see that thing? Is a, listen, we've been doing this and we, our fathers was there, our kings, our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. We were doing this and we had plenty of money. You, we were living good. Everything was good. You understand? And we saw no evil because now remember they are, their mind is blinded by sin. So they don't see right from wrong. That's why the Lord sent Jeremiah to teach them, but they still don't want to hear nothing. Now jump down to verse 19. Watch this. Verse 19. Go ahead. And we burned incense to the queen of heaven mm -hmm. and poured out drink offerings unto her. Did we make her cakes to worship her? That's and going into out the, hold on. It says, it says, did we make cakes to worship her? So they made the way making cakes, baking cakes to worship her, sacrificing unto her. That goes into birthdays. You understand? That goes into Valentine's days also. That goes into um, Mother's Day. You see that thing? The feminist movement, the LGBT, which is really the feminist movement. Yes, that's how they sacrificed. The way they dress, the things they do, how they hate men. But they come from men, but they hate patriarchy. They hate alpha males, but they come from men. They wouldn't be here if, if a man and woman didn't sleep together for them to come into the world. Why? Because imagine, think about it like this, right? The, I'm going to just take a left a little bit. The, 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 the LGBT community, right? Think about it. They want us to accept them for what they think they are, but they don't want to accept themselves for who, how God made them. So why should I accept you when you don't even accept yourself for who you are, but you want me to accept something else that you created and attached to you. You say, no, that's the new me now because I don't, I'm not happy with how God made me. I'm not happy being a man. I'm not happy being a woman. I'm going to change myself into something else. You want me to accept that, but you couldn't even accept yourself. You see that thing? Confusion. Confusion. Here we are, the black woman, she wants the authority of a man, but she wants you to treat her as like a woman, but she wants the authority of a man. She wants to get married, but she wants to be independent. She wants to get married, but she wants to have a final say. You can't make this stuff up. What is that called? Confusion. Delusion. You understand? Read that thing again, verse 19. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 19. Read. And when, and when we burned incense to the queen of heaven, Mm -hmm. and poured out drink offerings unto her. Right. Did we make our capes to worship her and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men? Without our men? We, we, listen, is, they are saying, listen, we was doing this while our men was right there. The proof of that, jump up to verse 15, is as we were doing all of these things, not, we didn't do this without our, our, the consent from our husband. So do you think they asked for consent? No, they did not. Because they was running the show like they're doing today. So, but the man is sitting right there holding the woman's handbag while the woman acts like a man. Hmm. Verse 15. Read it again. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 15. Go ahead. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods. Stop right there. That's all I want. That's all I want. It says, and all then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods. So they knew this. These were simps, you understand? That was following the woman, you understand? It's that that's why even the women are saying, listen, we did all this and we did not do this without our men. Our men was right there. They didn't say nothing because they were scared because Jezebel would put the black men in fear. Jezebel, because they want the authority of a man, that's why they dress like men, you understand? They act like men. They even sit like men. They want the authority of a man. That's why even these men, so-called men, they are afraid to check Jezebel. You see, Jezebel will always find, let's say you see men sitting, we're talking, Jezebel always just comes in out of nowhere, and when she talks to men, she'll be loud. She wants her voice to be heard above the man that she found talking. That's Jezebel. Big, black, ashy, demon woman. That's a demon right there. 
You understand? That's not somebody you should marry. Mm -mm. She must stay right there, die alone with a dog. Okay? That's, let's, you stay away from that demon right there. Why? Because she does not know her place. She don't know how to talk to men. She's always so loud. Why? Because she has to be excessive because she knows that the position she's assuming, that's not the position that God gave her. That's why now she has to go overboard with it. You see that thing? Hmm. Now, watch this. Let's deal with the next characteristics. You understand? Because guess what? We're going over Jezebel's business model. Watch this. The next, the next characteristics of Jezebel's business model is what? Jezebel wants the advantage of a woman. First, she wants the authority of a man, but she wants the advantage of a woman. Hmm. That's some heavy stuff. Watch this. Now, there's three subcategories that I'm going to group this. Okay. Wedding, sex, provider, protector. That's what Jeze These are the advantages that Jezebel wants. Notice I didn't say marriage. I said wedding. You see that? I know some of you missed it. Jezebel wants the advantage of a woman. So she wants the wedding. She wants sex. She wants a man that will provide. She wants a man that will protect. These are the advantages that Jezebel wants. Now let's deal with wedding and sex. Give me Tobit 7 verse 13. Tobit chapter 7 verse 13. Watch this. You know, I'm making enemies this day. Watch this thing. Tobit 7 verse 13. Okay. Toby, chapter 7, verse 13. Go ahead. Then he called his daughter Sarah. Mm -hmm. And she came to her father. Wait. And he took her by the hand. And gave her to be wife to Tobias. Mm -hmm. Saying, behold, take her after the law of Moses. And lead her away to thy father. And he blessed him. Now stop right there. Now, there's a lot of things going on in this verse because we read it all the time. But I want to show you the deepness of this verse. Is that then he called his daughter Sarah. Now, this is Reguel. Reguel is calling his daughter, okay? And she, meaning Sarah, came to her daughter, I mean to her father. It says, he took her by the hand and gave it to be wife to Tobias, saying, behold, take her after the law of Moses, and lead her away to thy father, and he blessed them. Now, he's saying, take her after the law of Moses. Because you read about this, you ask the brother, what is that talking about? Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis. I'm going to show you something right there. I'm going to show you, brother, something this day. And sisters, too, pay close attention. Give me Genesis chapter 2. Okay, Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. Watch this. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. Go ahead. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Mm -hmm. And he said, and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. So now Adam is put to sleep so that Eve can be created out of Adam. Next verse. Go ahead. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man mm -hmm. made he a woman. Come on. And brought her unto the man. Stop right there. Who brought the woman unto Adam? The father. You see that? The father brought the woman unto the man. Just like Reguel brought her daughter, brought his daughter to who? To Tobias to be the wife. Right here what's going on here? This is the wedding going on here. You see that thing right there? The wedding. Read verse 22 again. Genesis chapter 2 verse 22. Go ahead. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man mm -hmm. made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And brought her unto the man. The same thing that Reguel did with his daughter, Sarah. You understand? Because he brought his daughter, Sarah, to Tobias to be the wife. That's what's going on here in Genesis 2.21. This is the law of Moses. Hmm. That's some heavy stuff right there. So go back to Tobit 7 verse 13. Okay. Tobit chapter 7 verse 13. Read. Then he called his daughter Sarah. Mm -hmm. And she came to her father. And he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias. Uh -huh. 
saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses and lead her away to thy father. You see that thing him. is he says, take care after the law of Moses and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed them. That's what the Lord did right here with Adam, with Eve. When she, the Lord brought our Eve to Adam, that was the what? The, the wedding. This is the wedding in Genesis 2.22 right here. But I want to show you something, right? You see in Tobit 7 verse 13. In Tobit 7.13, the wedding is going on here. This is the wedding. You know what? This is the, 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 the father is walking his daughter down the aisle. That's, what you, that's where they get it from in the movies when they get married. So now, guess what? Sisters love that because that's the wedding. They love that because everybody's there. They see you when your father is walking you down the aisle and you are wearing this long dress that is dragging on the floor and you've got your maid of, maids of honor holding the back of the dress so that the train does not drag on the floor. Mm. The sisters, they love that. That's the advantage that the Jezebel woman likes. She doesn't like the marriage. No, she likes the wedding. I need you men to understand that. The Jezebel woman loves the wedding. She loves the glitz and the glamour. She don't care about the marriage. She only cares about the wedding. Okay, watch this. Keep reading. Verse 14. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. And called Edna his wife and took paper and did write an instrument of covenant and sealed it. So now they took paper, which is the marriage certificate. They sealed it, you understand? Which is the instrument of covenant of the marriage, the marriage certificate. Okay, come on. Now you are legally married because they like that. But the thing that is most important to them is the wedding. That's the mindset of the, Je that's the Jezebel's business model. That's why you see a lot of these sisters, they get married. Be uh, six months Before six months is even finished, they are already divorced. But they'll still talk about the wedding. They'll still be putting the pictures of their wedding on social media, but they don't care about the marriage. That's Jezebel's business model. She likes that thing, the wedding. You understand? It's about her. Me, 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 me. That's what it's about. You understand? Next verse. Verse 15. Come on. Verse 15. Read. Then they began to eat. You see that thing? Because that's the party. That's the wedding. You understand? Partying, drinking, eating. You understand? The big cake and so forth, the wedding dress. And by the way, on that day, they know what it means to be a woman because she wants a wedding dress. You understand? If you buy tight jeans, she's going to be looking at you funny. Wait a minute, what? I mean, it's my wedding. It's my big day and so forth. Why you bought me jeans? Hold on a second. But you don't want to put on a dress. How come today you want to put on a dress? Because you're supposed to wear what you like to wear, which is jeans and leggings and and bum shorts, how come you don't want to wear that? You see that thing? Very, very deceitful. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Tobit 8 verse 1. Give me Tobit, Tobit 8, 8 verse 1. 1. Go ahead. And when they had supped, mm -hmm. they brought Tobias in unto her. So now it says when they had supped, when they eaten, this is during the wedding feast. Jump down to verse 19. Tobit 8, verse 19. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. And he kept the wedding feast 14 days. You see that thing? They kept the wedding feast, wedding feast, 14 days. So it was a party. You understand? Everybody must know about it. You know, so you, you know remember such and such is wedding? Yes. She wants that thing to be talked about. She will gather all her friends, even the people that don't like it. I want them to know that today is my big day. I want them to know that to see that I'm getting married. Because that's all they care about. You understand? That's what we're reading here. You understand? That's why I mentioned, I'm showing you that Jezebel's business model, she what? She wants the advantage of a woman. One of that thing, one of the list, one of the list of items is that she wants the wedding. Not the marriage, but she wants the wedding. You understand? She wants the wedding. Now, guess what? When she's being, when she's walked down the aisle by her father, the, her father giving her, her hand in marriage and so forth, she has to be dressed up and decked up. Give me that in Jeremiah 2.32. Jeremiah chapter 2. Because these are the things that comes with your father walking you down the aisle to give you to your husband. Right? Watch this. Jeremiah 2 verse 32. Hmm. 
Read that thing, what you got. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 32. Read. Can a maid forget her ornaments? Mm. Or a bride her attire? No. Come Yet on. My people have forgotten me days without number. Because we've forgotten the laws. That's why we've forgotten the most high. So, but the Lord is asking, he says, can a maid forget her ornaments? Can she forget her makeup? No, she don't forget those things on that day. You understand? Or a bride, her attire. Can she forget her wedding dress? No. You will, I've never seen anywhere in, in our, in, 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 in our commun so-called communities where a woman, she was what? A woman forgot her wedding dress. Never. I've never heard that before. I've never heard that thing before in my life. Because that's what they put emphasis on. Not the marriage, the wedding. That's what's important to them. Watch this. Give me that in Esther, chapter 15, verse 1. You understand? Because remember, she will not forget her wedding dress. So she has to be decked up. You understand? Watch this. Give me Esther in the Apocrypha, chapter 15, verse 1. I'm going to show you. I'm giving an example of when they deck themselves up and dress up and all that. This is what they want to look. This one, they want the people to see them. Watch this. Our foremother Esther, she was the queen in Persia. But I want to show you like where the way she was dressed up. This is what our sisters, they, that's all they care about. Those that are not in the spirit. Read what you got. And guess what? Don't get it twisted. I'm not saying sisters Esther. must not dress up nice. Hold on. I'm not saying sisters mustn't dress up. I'm not saying that. Okay. Read that Esther 15 and 1. We're going to read down. Esther chapter 15 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And upon the third day, when she had ended her prayer, she laid away her morning ornaments, her morning garments. A morning garments, because she was, guess what? She says, her morning garments, read. She laid away her morning garments and put on her glorious apparel. Now she put on her glorious apparel. Now he's going to explain to you the type of glorious apparel she had on. Keep reading. And being gloriously adorned. You see that thing? Being gloriously adorned. She was decked up. She dressed modestly on that day. That, that's what the sisters will do. On the wedding, they know how to be a woman. You understand? Go ahead. And being gloriously adorned after she had called upon God. Mm hmm who is the beholder and savior of all things. Right? She took two maids with her. You see that thing? Here's another advantage that the, these, the, 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 the Jezebel wants. She wants maids. She wants people to work for her. She wants, you know, a helper. She doesn't have to lift a finger. She wants people to paint her nail, you understand, and massage her feet. Mm. Sims do that stuff. But what I'm showing you here is that you see, this is what these are the advantages that the sister, the Jezebel wants. She wants the advantage of being a woman, but she wants the authority of a man. What we are reading here, that's exactly what the sisters, they all that's what they care about. I'm talking about unrighteous sisters. You understand? Read that again. Esther chapter 15, verse 2. Mm -hmm. And being gloriously adorned, read after she had called upon God. Who is the beholder and savior of all things? Come on. She took two maids with her. She took two maids with her because she had maidens. Go ahead. And upon the one she leaned mm -hmm. and was carrying herself daintily. You see that thing? It says she was leaning on one of her maids. You understand? As carrying herself daintily. Watch this next verse. Go ahead. And the other followed, bearing mm. up her train. Now, that's some heavy stuff right there. It says, another maid, because she says there two. One, she was leaning upon one to carry herself nicely and so forth. It says, the other followed behind her, bearing up her train. You know what, what, you know what that means? You know what is a train? Because the dress was so long that they were dragging on the floor. So the train of a dress is what? The, the dress that is one. When you walk, you know those royal dresses? It'd be dragging on the floor. So the one of the maids was holding up the train of her dress. So on that day, you don't even have to tell them to dress modestly. They know what to do. You see that thing? Very, very deceptive. Very selective. You understand? Watch this. 
Give me the book. Okay, give me Genesis 24, verse 3 now. Watch this. Because another thing, remember, there's advantages of being a woman. You understand? Because you want the, you want the wedding. And the wedding comes with what? The wedding comes with the, the feast. You understand? Gifts, presents, and so forth. And guess what? It comes with what? It comes with the things, the gifts. This, the wedding will come with the dress, will come with the things that the changeable suits of apparel on that day. That's why you see when you look at these weddings, there'll be what? She will have, she, the bride will have the, the maid, the maid of honor, you know, the maids of honor. They'll be changing every now and again. with dressing differently. They've got changeable suits of apparel on that day. You understand? Guess what? There's also gifts that are given on that day. Give me that in Genesis 24, verse 3. Watch this. Genesis chapter 24, verse 3. Now, this is our forefather Abraham sending his servant to go and look for a wife for Isaac. Watch this. Our forefather, grandfather. Read that. Genesis chapter 24, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among mm -hmm. whom I dwell. I'm a, okay, come on. So he said, listen, don't, may, don't get a wife of the Canaanites. I don't want that. Okay, go ahead. For my son. Read. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. So he says, but you must go to my country and to my kindred, meaning the, my people, and take, take a wife unto my son Isaac. Okay, so now the 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 law the this is now because the men the men the men control marriage. Men men we control marriage. Men we control access to marriage. That's what we're seeing here. The man is the one that decides to marry you, not the other way around. So we control access to marriage. You understand? The honor of marriage comes through the man, not the woman. Watch this. Now give me Genesis 24, verse 30. Because now the servant has traveled. He has gone to seek a wife for Isaac, for his master. Okay, watch this. Read verse 30 now. Genesis chapter 24, verse 30. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when he saw the earring and the bracelet upon his sister's hands, and when he heard the words of Rebekah, his sister, saying, Thus spake a man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well. So now, this woman, it says we did what? Read that part again. Genesis chapter 24, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when he, heard, when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hands. Stop right there. It says when, this is Laban. Laban saw, you saw, it says he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hands. Who gave them that? Jump up to verse 22. Read that. Genesis chapter 24, verse 22. Read. And it came to pass, as mm -hmm. the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring and a of half a shekel weight and mm -hmm. two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold. You see that thing? So she took the, the, the seven took that, he took that, the golden earrings, you understand, and the bracelet and gave to Rebecca. Now jump down to the state here again. Now these are gifts. Remember, this man is coming to what to seek for a wife, for Isaac, our forefather. Okay, read verse thirty now. Verse thirty. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when she saw the earring, when he saw the earring and the bracelets upon his sister's hands. Read. And when he heard the words of Rebecca, his sister, saying, "Thus spake the man unto me," that he came unto the man, and behold. He stood by the camels at the well. So now what you are seeing here is that they, now this man is like the uncle coming to do, do the Lobola negotiations. That's what's going on here. But he's not coming empty-handed. He has to bring gifts. You understand? So sisters, they love that because wedding comes with gifts. You're in a gift giving. Okay? So now she is going to be showered with gifts and so forth. That's what they care about. Now read verse 53. Come on. 
verse 53. Mm -hmm. And the servants brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold mm -hmm. and raiment and gave them to Rebekah and gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. You see that thing? So this, the, the servant, Abraham servant, he didn't come. He wasn't a bum. He came with things. He came with jewels of silver, jewels of gold and clothes and gave to Rebekah. You see, she's receiving gifts. He says he gave also her, to her brother and to her mother precious things. That means there's more where this came from. That means, guess what? Another factor is that the man must provide. I'm going to deal with that next. But I want to show you is that the sisters, they don't care about the marriage. They care about the wedding. Then the next thing they care about is the sex. Now, they require the black man to be a sex machine in bed. You see that thing? He never gets tired and so forth because that's all they care about. Watch this. I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Give me Ezekiel 23 verse 3. Ezekiel 20. I'm trying to show you the priority levels. They are not on point. You understand? Watch this. Ezekiel 23 verse 3. Ezekiel chapter 23 verse 3. Go ahead. And they committed whoredoms in Egypt. Mm -hmm. They committed whoredoms in their youth. They were their breasts pressed, mm. and they and they they bruised the teeth of their virginity. You see that thing meaning what? Haughty, and what? And lustful eyes. Read that again. Meaning what? They have a whorish mindset. That's why you see all these, especially celebrities, even not even celebrities. You see the normal black women in the community. That's what they do. They care about the wedding and they care about sex and how they look. They must always be over-sexualized the way they dress. Men must be looking at their bums, their cleavages and all that. That's all they care about. You understand? Hold this. Give me Isaiah 3, verse 16. Because Isaiah talked about that thing. Okay? Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. Moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty. They are haughty, meaning they are proud. Read. Right? And walk with stretched forth necks. They want the authority of a man because they are stubborn. You can't tell them nothing. Read. And wanton eyes. That's it right there. And wanton eyes. That's why in Ezekiel it says, and they committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in their youth. That's why they be having sex. Sisters, why aren't you married? No, I'm still young. I'm still young. I still want to live my life. You see, they are committing what whoredoms in their youth. So by the time she gets married, that thing is huge like a parachute. You understand? So now it says these were, it says there where they are breast pressed in their youth because they are having sex at a young age. It says, and there they bruise the teeth of their virginity. Now they are no longer virgins now. You understand? Because I'm, I'm trying to live my life. No, I'm still young. I don't want to get married. So which means you want men to abuse you, your box, you want men to abuse a vagina. So now it's time to get married. The thing is tired because all these men that you've been dealing with, you understand? That's why it says wanton eyes. Because why? Sex is on their mind. The wedding and sex. And how they get the sex? By the way they dress, how they, they want. They, the only thing that they care about is what's between their legs. They don't care about nothing else. They have nothing else to offer. You understand that? So that's what Isaiah is explaining here. You understand? Keep going. Isaiah 3. Wanton eyes. Read. Walking and minting as they go. Mm -hmm. And making a tinkling with their feet. Making a tinkling with their feet. I guess they used to wear ankle braces. So, so they used to make a tinkling noise. So that what? You get their attention. You see that thing? So they do things for attention. They do things to be seen of men. Wanton eyes. Walking and minting as they go. And making a tinkling with their feet. They want the attention of men. Even when they are married, they still seek attention from other men. You can't make, the, you can't make it up. You understand? Watch this. Now, go back. Now give me Ezekiel 23 verse 3 again. Okay. Ezekiel 23 verse 3. Ezekiel chapter 23 verse 3. Right? And they committed whoredoms in Egypt. Mm -hmm. They committed whoredoms in their youth. They were their breast pressed, and there they bruised the teeth of their virginity. You see that thing? So now the only thing they care about is what? 
sex. So they care about the wedding, not the marriage, wedding and sex. You understand? Because I was watching this uh, documentary, it was this, it was a show, and, you know, what they say, looking for love. Because I like to watch those things because I'm getting content. So for the classes. And what I saw is that this sister was saying, listen, me, I don't believe in this sex before marriage. I want to know that, you know, the man is able to satisfy me sexually. I need to know if he can handle me sexually. Then I'll decide to marry you. That's what she cares about. You see, that's all she cares. Guess what? Sisters be wearing long dresses and fringes. How do you know that's all they care about? You don't know. So when you are proving, you must ask these questions. You must actually, that thing must be the last thing because none of you are going to know how it feels like until you get married. So that should be the last thing. You understand? You should focus on the more important things. I'm not saying that is not important. It is important. But you want to find out about it after the marriage anyway. So you shouldn't put too much emphasis on it because that day when you deal with one another, it will be a surprise. And then you get to learn how, you, how each one like how they want to be worked out, whatever. Okay, now, watch this. So that's what they care about. Now jump down to verse 20. Read verse 20. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. For she doted upon their paramours. You see that thing? She doted upon their paramours. Their paramours goes into what? Their sexual organs. That's what she cares. She wants to see if the brother has big feet. She's tall. She's got big. He's got big feet and so forth. That means in her mind, she's imagining. That means he must be well endowed. He has got a big. He got, he's got a big. If he got a big rod, that's all she cares about. You understand? Looking at things that they are not. They, those things are not gonna last. You understand that, Ray? Whose flesh is as the flesh of asses. You see that thing? Whose flesh is as the flesh of asses. The flesh goes into their penis. Is that their penis is like the penis of what? Donkeys and horses. Go ahead. And whose tissue, who, and whose issue is like the issue of horses. And whose issue is like the issue of horses, meaning what? The way they, what? They are, the way they spam, their ejaculation. That's what is going into here. I have to put it plain. That's, it is what it is. That's the Bible. I didn't write this. It says, whose issue is like the issue of horses? Meaning the way they spam is like a donkey or a horse is doing that. So that's all they care about. You understand? So you have to really investigate that you must take your time with the sister. You understand? Because that's all they care about. Once the sex is no longer the way, it's no longer the way they want and so forth, guess what? They are, they're going to hunt for the next victim. You understand? They got the satisfaction of the wedding and they got the satisfaction of sexual satisfaction. And guess what? And, the, the, and they also look at the position you've got. You've got money, you are wealthy and so forth. They care about that. They care about your money, your, your what's between your legs as a man. And guess what? The wedding that you will give to them when you get married. Everything else, listen, they still want the, they want the authority of a man. Don't get it twisted. They still want that authority of a man in the marriage. Now watch this thing. Now the next characteristics is that it says there's the advantage of a woman. I dealt with the first one, wedding and sex. Now they all they want what they want some a man to provide. They want the man to provide. These are the advantages that women want to receive when you say you marry them. You understand? Give me that in First Timothy five and eight. First Timothy chapter five, verse eight. Watch this. First Timothy chapter five verse eight. Go ahead. But if any provide not for his own, if any what? And if, but if any provide not for his own, if any man does not provide, does not provide, does not provide for his own, meaning his own nation. Go ahead. And especially for those of his own house. It was those of his own house, his wife and his children. Go ahead. He has denied the faith mm -hmm. and is worse than an infidel. You see, you have denied the faith. You've denied the faith in Christ. You have denied Christ and you are worse than an unbeliever. You are just like an atheist. You understand? But guess what? 
you you must provide as a man you must be a provider the Jezebel woman wants that type of brother that will provide you understand they want to provide these are the advantages of being a woman a man to provide for you to look out for you to look after you watch this genesis 24 verse 34 let's go back there because they also need to see how deep how deep your pockets are okay watch this because they want stability that's the advantage of being a woman I want to be taken all care of. I'm vulnerable. You see that thing? Watch this. Genesis 24, verse 30, 24, 34. Read that. Genesis 24, verse 34. Come on. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. I'm Abraham's servant. Read on. And the Lord uh -huh. has blessed my master greatly. You see that part right there? Remember, this is Abraham's servant that was sent to Rebecca, to Laban, to Rebecca's family, so that she can, he can get a wife for our forefather Isaac. So it says, and the Lord had blessed my master greatly. That means this man is wealthy. He's got wealth. Go ahead. And he is become great. Mm -hmm. And he has given him flocks. The him is Isaac, her. our forefather. The him is Isaac, our forefather. He says, Abraham has given our forefather, which is our grandfather, Isaac, flocks, read. And he had given him flocks and mm -hmm. herds, read. And silver and gold. Mm. Come on. And men servants and maid servants. Come on. And camels and asses. You see that thing? That means our forefather, Isaac, is what? Rich. You understand? He's got wealth. He's wealthy. Go ahead. Verse 35. Come on. And Sarah, my sister's wife, bare a son to my master when mm -hmm. she was old. Read. And unto him, he hath given all that he hath. You see that thing? And unto him, hath he given all that he hath. Meaning what? The flocks, the herds, the gold, the silver, the men seven, the maid seven, the camels and the asses. You see that thing? So this man is wealthy. You understand? He will be able to provide for me. And he's got more than heart could desire. You see that thing? You ever look, you ever seen these, these men in the world? Boo Petris Mutsepe, um, Petris Mutsepe, who else? Your, you know, you, your celebrities who cast on your vest and so forth. You understand? They, they, they have some kind of descent, Enyana sitting somewhere. A lot of them, if you know, if you notice, all of them, they have one thing in common. They are run by their women. The women in their lives, they run them. They run circles around them. They cannot tell the, those women what to do. You understand? Those women have the authority of a man, but they want the advantage of a woman, of being a woman. You understand? And that those advantages we're reading here, that man must be able to provide. You understand? That man, which I, want, I want a man to marry me. I want the, I want the big wedding. You understand? I want the men to be able to know how to sex me in the bedroom. So that's all they care about. The wedding, not the marriage, the sex, you understand? not kids, not, the, not what comes with the sex. Because now you have to be a mother. They don't want that. You understand? That's why a lot of them, they tied their tubes. They be having sex. They have been committing abortion. They say, no, I don't want kids. I'm tying my tubes. You get married. They don't say nothing that I cannot have kids. They don't say nothing. They just keep quiet. Okay, watch this. Give me Genesis chapter 13, verse 1. Let's see really how wealthy Isaac, our forefather Abraham was. Genesis 13, verse 1. Read that. Genesis chapter 13, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife. You see that? that he says, so now they went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had. Go ahead. And lots with him into the south. Come on. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. You see that? Our forefather, our great-grandfather, our forefather Abraham, is as he was very rich. Not, no, he, was, no, he wasn't just rich. He was very rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. And all of that he gave to our forefather Isaac. And our foremother, Rebecca, she knew that because the servant, Abraham's servant, told her of all of that. 
that my master is very wealthy. You see that thing? So these are the advantages because that man will be able to provide. You understand? Watch this. Give me Genesis chapter 30 verse 27. Remember it says, if any would not provide for his own. Genesis 30 verse 27. Watch this. Genesis chapter 30 verse 27. Read. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. So now this is our this is Laban, Jacob's uncle. He said, Listen, um, I know that um, I've learned by experience that the Lord had blessed me for your sake. The reason why I'm blessed because of you are here. Read on. And he said, appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. You see what he's saying? He says, listen, um, appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. Tell me what I must give you, and I'll give it to you. Go ahead. And he said unto him, thou knowest, thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. Now, this is our forefather Jacob now talking. Go ahead. For it was little. Which thou has, which thou hadest before I came, mm -hmm. and it is now increased unto a multitude. Read. And the Lord has blessed thee since my coming, and now when shall I provide for mine own house also? You see that thing is as now when shall I provide for my own house also? Because our Jacob was responsible, our forefather. He was responsible. He was a responsible man. He had responsibility, and he took accountability for the things that he's supposed to do in order for to, to take care of his own, like we read about in 1 Timothy 5, verse 8. So that's why it says, how shall I provide now? When shall I provide for mine own house also? So because he wants to go and do that. You understand? Because he was a responsible forefather. Now watch this. Give me the book of Exodus, okay? Give me Exodus 21, verse 10. Exodus 21, verse 10. Exodus chapter 21, verse 10. Read. If he take him another wife, mm -hmm. her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage, shall he, not diminish, shall he not diminish? You see that thing? This goes into taking another wife, but it also goes into you having a wife. It says her food, her raiment, meaning what? You must take care of her, food on the table, her raiment, meaning clothes, and her duty of marriage, that goes into sex and so forth, okay, shall he not diminish. So that means all these things must be provided for to this woman and provided for her. You understand? Read the next verse. Watch this. These are all the advantages that the woman will receive when she gets married. Go ahead. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. And if he do not do three unto her, then shall she go out free without money. You see that part right there? It says, and if he do not these three unto her, these three unto her, then he says, then she, then shall she go out free without money. Meaning what? She has a right to leave. You see that part right there? And guess what? Our sisters, that's the advantage they use the most. If they are no longer happy, they'll come up with all sorts of excuses just to leave because now all the things that they wanted, they now have. That's why a lot of them 84% of the black women, they are or the 84% of marriages that get dissolved is because the, the main culprit that is initiating these broken, these divorces is the black woman. And when they leave the marriage, they leave with half the estate of the brother. That's the advantage. That's why a lot of them, they are, they are, they've been married multiple times. When you look at the stuff they have is the things that they got from their marriages. Because it was not about marriage. It's about the wedding and being sexed and all of that. And after, look at what that woman did. What's that woman? Um, Black Coffee's ex-wife? Mbali something, right? Is that what she called? Mbali something. You, you see what she's doing? She just wants all these exuberant amounts of money from Black Coffee. Because it was never about the marriage. It was always about the wedding, fame, sex, clothes, hairdo, traveling, being on the news, social media, you know, glitz and glamour. That's all she cares about. 
She don't care about family. She don't care about the children. No. But she'll go to the media to cry and speak lies about the brother. You see that thing? Yes. That's what we're reading here. You understand? These are the advantages yes, that the sisters want to have, but they don't want no responsibility to come with it. They want the men to do everything. They don't have to do nothing. But the thing they want is the authority of a man. But they want the advantage of being a woman to receive all these benefits once you are married. The man must, be, must give me the wedding, sex. He must provide. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me the book of Judith because I want to show you our foremother. You understand? She was married until her husband died. But I want to show you the advantages that she had while her husband was still alive and after her husband died. Watch this. Judith, chapter 8, verse 1. Judith, chapter 8, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now at that time, Judith heard thereof, which, which was the daughter of Merari, the son of Ox, the son of Joseph, the son of Oziel, the son of Elsia, the son of Ananias, the son of Asato, the son of Eliu, the son of Eliab, the son of Nathaniel, the son of Samuel, the son of Salasadai, the son of Israel. So now, this is our foremother Judith. They are showing the, 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 the father that she comes from. You understand? Now watch the next verse. Read verse 2. Verse 2. And Manasseh was her husband mm. of her tribe and kindred who died in the barley harvest. So now Manasseh was her husband and he died in the barley harvest. Next verse. So now one of the, the advantage that she had was that she had a hedge over her. So she was not spoiled. You understand? Now next, read the next verse. Watch this. Verse three. For as he stood overseeing them that bound sheaves in the field. You see that thing? So he was what? He owned businesses. He had lands. You understand? He had lands, he had farms, so he had workers, men servant and maid servant. That's why it says, for as he stood overseeing them that bound sheaves in the field. You see that thing? Go ahead. The heat came upon his head, and he fell on his bed and died in the city of Bethulia. And they buried him with his fathers in the field between Dothaim and Balamo. So now what you are seeing here, the husband, Judy's husband was wealthy. He was a wealthy man. The proof of that, we just read it now. He was an overseer, meaning what? He owned lands. He was a CEO. That's what this called today. Now read verse 7. Watch this. This is what, this is what Manessa left for, her, for his wife. Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. She was also of a goodly countenance. And very beautiful to behold. Meaning she was bare to the bone. Go ahead. And her husband Manessas left her gold. Had Stop left right her there. gold. You see what Manessas, you see it, our forefather Manessa? This is what he left for, her, for, for his wife. It says, and her husband Manessas left her gold. Go ahead. That means he had mines. Because where do you get the gold from? So not only did he own farms, he owned mines too. Hmm. Go ahead had left her gold and silver. Platinum, ray, And men servants. So he and she had men servants. servants. Men servants, maid servants, ray, And cattle. Mm. And lands. And lands. Lands. Plural. You understand? Lands. And cattle and lands. Read. And she remained upon them. Mm-hmm. So and guess was... what? Hold on. Wait. And she remained upon meaning she owned all of that. She owned everything that Manessa, her husband, owned. Because now after he passed, everything that he had belonged to Judith. The gold, the silver, the lands, the cattle. You understand? She owned all of that. So these are the advantages of being a woman. The inheritance that you will receive from your husband because when he's, he's the, the, the things that she go, he's got, you benefit from the things that he's got. You because he's, he's a provider. Okay, watch this now. Jump down to verse 10. 
Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Then she sends her waiting woman. Stop right there. She sent her waiting women. So she had waiting women. She had maidens. Like our foremother Esther in Persia. So these are the advantages, Pe. That's why today the sisters, they also want a domestic. They say, no, you know, I want a domestic. You know, I'm struggling with the kids. I want a domestic and so forth. She's just doing this because she's lazy. But what I'm trying to show you is that that's what they want. They want maidens. They want domestic workers to be able to do work for them and so forth. We don't have to lift a finger. You understand? But what I'm showing you is that this is what this, these sisters are looking for, all these benefits, but they don't want to, they don't offer anything on the table. They just want to bring what's between their legs and that's it. They think that's the only thing that they have to offer. You understand? They don't think or like there's other things that you, you need to offer. They don't think about that. In their minds, this is the only thing that you got to offer and that's it. Think about it. Now watch this. Now the next po the next one is, remember we're still dealing with the advantage of being a woman. Another advantage or under this subcategory is that what? She wants a man that will be able to protect her. You understand? She wants a provider and a protector and a man that will be able to marry her and give her the wedding of her dreams, a wedding day and so forth. You see that thing? She wants all these advantages, okay? A man that will protect. Watch this. Give me the book of First Maccabees 13, verse 6. First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 6. This is when this is during the time of our forefather Simon. That was his time to set order in Israel and to fight the Greeks. So Trifon was coming against us to destroy us. And guess what? Our forefather Simon, the Mosai, blessed him with the spirit. And he was able to what to bring honor in Israel. Now read verse 6. Watch this. First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Doubtless, I will avenge my nation. I will avenge. I will avenge my nation. He says, Doubtless, I'm going to avenge my nation, the nation of Israel. Read. And the sanctuary. The sanctuary, which is the temple, our heritage and our culture and so forth. Read. And our wives. Our what? And our wives. And our wives. And our wives. You see that thing? And our wives. The reason why I'm, I'm emphasizing on this is because they want the, the authority of a man, but they want the advantage of a woman. I'll give an example. Let's say there's a home invasion. She's not going to be in the front on that day, on that night, in that night. No. She'll be at the back wanting you to handle the intruder. She's not going to be in the front, so she becomes vulnerable when she feels like it. You understand? I'll give an example, because they become vulnerable when they want. Give me Deuteronomy 28 real quick. I'm going to show you that. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse, verse 56. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 56. Read. The tender and delicate woman among you, mm -hmm. which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. You see that thing? So now she becomes tender. She becomes tender and delicate. You understand? It says, it says she be, because here the Lord is saying the tender and delicate woman among you. Because our sisters, they want to be tender and delicate when now the man has to be in the front to protect them. They want the protector only when it suits them. Then they become vulnerable. It says, which would not adventure. She wouldn't even adventure to attempt to, uh, to, soul, to, set, it says, to set the soul of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and for tenderness. She wouldn't want to be in the front when a man comes to rob you in the house. She wants you to be in the front. You see that thing? Hypocrisy. Opportunistic. You understand? That's the characteristics of a tick. You see that thing? A tick, a blood sucker. The one that you see them on, on, on cows and so forth, they be sucking blood. Mm -hmm. You understand? She becomes the parasite when there's a home invasion. 
when there's danger going on, now you must be in the front because you're the man. You must handle the business. You understand? But they still want the authority of a man. Only when it suits them. They want to be a woman only when it suits them. On the wedding day, they want to look like a woman. But during the marriage, they want to look like a man and act like a man and behave like one and receive the powers of being a man in the marriage. Being independent, but you are still married. That's, that's the mindset of the Jezebel. That's Jezebel's business model. You understand? Read that again, verse 6. First Maccabees, chapter 13, verse 6. Read. Doubtless, I will avenge my nation mm -hmm. and the sanctuary and our wives. And our wives, read. And our children. Our children too, read. For all the heathen are gathered to destroy us of every malice. Of oh, very malice. You see that thing? They want that advantage. Now watch this. Give me Nehemiah 4 verse 14. Because our forefather Nehemiah, he addressed this particular situation as well. You understand? When we was building, what are we doing this for? Okay. Nehemiah 4 verse 14. Read that. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 14. Come on. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto no, no. us. No, no, verse 14. Nehemiah 4, verse 14. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and, and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, right. and fight for your brethren your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. You see that thing? And fight. It says, fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives and your houses. So guess what? When it's war time, they want the men in the front. But when it's come to running the house, they don't want the men to, they don't want the men to tell them what to do. Because Jezebel doesn't want to be told what to do. She hates instruction especially when it comes from the black man, because they don't have a problem when the white man is telling them what to do at the, at the plantation. They have no problem with that. The white man will tell you, listen, in this company, we must wear long dresses, you must cover your head. She'll do it. She will do it without a question, without combating, without any resistance, she will do it. But when she gets off work, she'll go to the cassis, to that guy, that brother's puzzle shop, she'll be wearing with a cleavage out, with her thighs out. Because she'll rather respect the white man and disrespect the black man. And she don't give a damn about that if she, because if, if she's disrespecting her black man. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me John 19, 26. John 19. This is when Christ was crucified, okay? When Christ died, this is what he said when he was um, um, about to give up the ghost. This is what he said to John, okay? Read that. John 19, 26. John chapter 19, verse 26. Go ahead. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by and the, and the disciple standing by whom he loved, mm -hmm. he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. So now Christ is telling his mother, say, Woman, listen, behold thy son, meaning making reference to John. This is your son. Go ahead. Next verse. Then said he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. Behold thy mother, meaning look after my mother. Look after my mother because why? She's not supposed to be by herself. You're going to be a hedge over her. You see what he's saying to her? He's saying to him, he said, listen, behold thy mother, meaning look after my mother. You understand? That's the advantage, meaning protect her. Look after her. Provide and protect. Okay, go ahead. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. You see what he did? He says, from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. Meaning what? Christ's mother now was living with John. You see that thing? That's, that's, that's that, to protect and to provide. That's what they want. You understand? Watch this. Give me Sirach 36, 24. Okay. To make sure that, you know what? She's not without a hedge. Okay, Sirach 36, verse 24. Read that. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 36, verse 24. Come on. He that gets at the wife beginneth the position, mm -hmm. a help like unto himself, and a pillow of rest. You see that thing? If you be if you get at the wife, you begin at the possession. A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. So guess what? She was made for you. You understand? For you. She's your possession. And you must take care of that possession. You must provide for the possession. You must take care, protect the possession. Okay, go ahead. Verse 25. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. Where no hedges, there the possession is spoiled. You see that? The position is going to be spoiled when there's no hedge, when there's no leadership. You understand? So now the Lord is giving us the blueprint on how to make sure that sisters don't run around like headless chickens. And the sisters must see this and say, you know what? If I am not, don't have a hedge over me, I'm going to be spoiled for sure because this is not an opinion. You understand? This is a fact. This is not a tweet on Twitter. No, this is a fact. This is the laws of God, not a tweet. This is not a WhatsApp message. No, this is God's commandments in the spirit of Christ. Watch this. Now, the problem, the problem that our sisters have is what? The, and guess what? Here's, here's another advantage because they use this all the time in Ephesians. Give me Ephesians 5 verse 28 because they don't read the one that says submit yourself to your husband. No, they like this one in the Christian church. Read verse 28. Ephesians chapter you know 5 verse 28. Read verse 21, because I want to show you how they misuse the scripture. Because if you really look, look at Ephesians 5, right? Ephesians chapter 5 is 1 down to verse 21. It goes into, it talks about the congregation. 22 down, it talks about husband and wife. In the Christian church, they use 21 to say men must also submit to women. And the Christian pastors, they push, the, they push that garbage, they pervert in the scripture. Read verse 21. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21. Come on. Submitting, un submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. You see that thing? Submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. So what is this talking about when it says submitting yourself one to another? Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews, okay? Chapter 13. I'm going to show you what this is talking about. Hebrews 13 verse 17. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 17. Start at verse 7. Read verse 7, then we're going to jump. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. So this goes into what? The leadership. You understand? It says, obey them that have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, meaning God's commandments. Now jump down to verse 17. Watch this. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. Obey them that have the rule over you. He's repeating himself again, talking about the leadership. Who is he talking to? The congregation. It says, obey them, meaning submit yourself to those that have the rule over you. Go ahead. And submit yourselves. Mm -hmm. For they watch for your souls. For they watch for your souls, right? As they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and mm -hmm. not with grief. Ray, for that is unprofitable to you. For you, that is unprofitable for you. So what is he saying? So when he says, submit yourself one to another in the fear of God, is submit to the leadership. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about that why men must submit themselves to their, to their wives. That's not in the Bible. But in the Christian church, that's what they use. And some sisters, they are still in that Christian mindset. That's why it's very hard for some sisters in the camp to follow simple instructions to, and to follow instruction, command. Because why? They are still walking around with fringes and a borough of blue, long dresses, but they still, they still in that Christianity mindset, that witchcraft called Christianity. You understand? Go back to Ephesians 5. Verse 21 again. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Jump up to verse 1 now. Verse 1. Be therefore followers, be therefore followers of God 
as dear children. You see that? He's going into what? He's going into the congregation. So chapter, chapter 5, verse 1 through verse 21, is explaining he's going into the congregation. That's why he is saying, listen, um, he's talking about, he says, what? Awake thou, thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and so forth. Then he says, and be not drunk with wine, when is excess, but be filled with the spirit. You see, he's talking about the congregation here. Now read verse 22. Verse 22. Go ahead. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. You see that? Now this is going into marriage. It says wives must submit themselves unto their husbands as unto the Lord. Now read verse 28. Let me show you because in the Christian church, they don't read this. They don't read 22 to verse 27. They only read verse 28. Watch this. Read that. And they will, they will read, they read 28 and they use 28 with 21. You understand that? And who's teaching that? The dumb Christian pastors. Read what you got, verse 28. Ephesians chapter 5, 28. Come on. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Mm -hmm. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. You see that thing? With the, you see that part when it says, so ought men to love their wives as their own body. Say, you see? You must love me. So, and the way you love me, you must also submit yourself to me. Because the scripture says that, verse 21, submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. So that's not what he's talking about. He didn't say men must submit themselves to their, to their wives. No, he says men love your wives. According to the scriptures. You understand? He's talking about that. So, but what I'm showing you is that the sisters, they want to be protected. They want all the benefits, but they want none of the responsibilities. And that's the problem. You understand? Now, the next characteristics is outside of uh, advantage of a woman. I dealt with that. There's three categories. There's four, four things under the advantage of a woman is what? Wedding, sex, provide, protect. That's what they want. Now, then the final characteristics is they have the accountability of a child. They want the advantage or they want the authority of a man. They want the advantage of being a woman, but they have the accountability of a child. Meaning what? They are irresponsible. They don't want to take responsibility for nothing. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, right? There's a scripture in Sirach. I think it might be chapter 11. Let me look at it. Okay. Excuse me. Watch this. Give me a second. Hmm. Yeah, give me Sirach chapter 4. Give me Sirach chapter 4 and verse 29. Watch this. Because they are always demanding. The sisters are always demanding. They always want men to give, 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 give. But when it's time for them to what to return the favor, to be able to be responsible, to be held accountable. They are nowhere to be found. They will respond to you with excuses. You understand? Watch this. Sirach chapter 4 verse 29. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 29. Read. Be not hasty in thy tongue. Mm -hmm. And in thy deeds, slack and remiss. Because they are so quick with their mouth. That's why they like to run their big black mouth. And in their deeds, they slack and remiss. When it's time for them to take responsibility and accountability, guess what? They are nowhere. They, they slack and they remiss. They make excuses. They take no accountability. Next verse. Go ahead. No, verse, verse 31. Verse 31. Mm -hmm. Let not thine hand be stretched out to the receive. That's the black woman. You understand? He says, don't let your hand be stretched out to receive. Read. And shut when thou shouldest repay. And when it's time for you to take responsibility to bring your your, your, to bring yourself to the table, you don't want. You understand? You play victim because they play victim all the time. You understand these manipulation games? They do that all the time because they use their emotions to do that. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 32 verse 9. And the reason why our sisters have the accountability of a child, Isaiah explained it. You understand? Watch this. Isaiah 32 verse 9. Read that. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 9. Come on. 
Rise up, ye women that are at ease. That's the commandment. It says, rise up, you women that are at ease. Because guess what? They are at ease in terms of what? Accountability. When it comes to accountability, they are easy on themselves. They pat their, themselves on the back. They make excuses. They slack and remiss. They stretch out their hand when they want, but when it's time to repay, you don't find them no way. That's why they are at ease, because nobody's requiring them to be accountable. And when we do it, we hate them. When we do it, we don't love them. When we do it, we are misogynists. You are misogynists. You see that? Read verse 9 again. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 9. Come on. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Mm -hmm. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Read. Give ear unto my speech. You see that thing? It says, hear, it says, hear my voice, ye careless daughter. They, they are careless. You understand? Because when somebody is careless, that means, who guess what? They are sloppy. They don't know what they are doing. But they will put up, to put up a smoke screen as if they know what they are doing. That's why a lot of, that's why you see there's broken families, what? Because these are women only run households. Women are raising children on, the, on, on their own. There's no man to tell them what to do, what to do and what not to do. And if he does, guess what? They'll be fighting that man from sun up to sundown. Why? Because they don't want to be told what to do. That's why they are at ease. And when you check them, they get upset, they get angry, they kick the man out. I don't want, I don't want you to be in my life anymore, so on and so forth. You understand? Read on. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Many days and years shall ye be troubled. That's what you are seeing now. Ye because now, you. hold on. The women of our sisters, they are troubled. They've been troubled for many years and many days and years now. He says, shall you be troubled? Look at the way the black woman is. She's troubled, but because she's too proud to admit it, to ask for help, guess what? The Lord says, I'm going to make sure that you look like a fool. And that's what you are seeing right now. Go ahead. Many days and years shall you be troubled, ye uh -huh. careless women. Ye careless women, meaning what? You dumb women who don't know what the hell you're doing. You understand? Read. For the vintage shall fail. Who's the? What is the vintage? The, even the, the aged women will fail. The aged women are failing today because they don't teach these young girls how to be women, how to be submissive. And if they do, these young girls don't give, they don't want to hear nothing. They block their ears, they wear pants, they understand, they shake their bums, they have sex. They pop babies, they don't give it like it's no, there's no tomorrow. The vintage shall fail, right? The gathering shall not come. Nobody going to bother to gather the black women together to get them in order. But guess what? We are doing it. Those that the Lord will call in, they will come in. And when they do come in, they must apply. They mustn't be sitting here like they are in the Christian church. Next verse. Come on. Tremble, ye women that are at ease. Now the Lord is repeating be again. Troubled. He says, hold on. He says, tremble. Ye women that are it is. He's repeating is one he says, rise up. Then second he says, tremble, meaning be afraid, be scared. You understand? Because only fear is gonna put women, the woman, the black woman, not at ease, like she is now. Like she she living her life like she don't care. You understand? But she still wants to be provided for, she still wants to be protected, she still wants the authority, she still wants the honor of being married, but she doesn't want to be a wife. She still wants to be independent while she's married. She doesn't want kids, but she wants sex. And when she does have kids, she sends them to the grandmother. You see that thing? She doesn't, she wants all the benefits, but none of the responsibility that comes with it. Because children, sex comes with children. You have sex, you're going to get pregnant. They want to have sex, but they don't want to have children. That's why even sisters that are married, a lot of them, they have what? They have morning after they, they have, they take injections. They have the patch because they say, I don't want to fall pregnant because I'm not ready to fall pregnant. But who decides that? The man does that, not the woman. But that's what we're seeing today. You understand? Go ahead. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Mm-hmm. 
strip you and make you bay. Go ahead. Gird, and gird sackcloth upon your loins. Meaning what? Have some shame. That's what the Lord is saying. Watch this. Now, give me the reason why they, these, our sisters are at ease. And guess what? Now, give me Ezekiel 18 verse 17. They've been at ease for too long. The black woman has been at ease for too long. That's why she's got the accountability of a child. Because children are irresponsible. The black woman today, she's irresponsible because nobody's checking it. When you do, they say you hate women. But we don't care about that. We're going to do what the Bible says. Ezekiel 13 verse 17. This is what the Most High God commanded the black man, the Israelite man, to do this thing. Watch this. Ezekiel 13 verse 17. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 13 verse 17. Come on. Likewise, thou son of man, mm -hmm. set thy face against the daughters of thy people. The law says we must set our face against the black woman. Read. Which prophesy out of their own heart. They prophesy out of their own heart. What is the thing that they are professing? They are professing feminism. They are professing matriarchy. They are professing the worshipping of the woman. They are professing uh, toxic masculinity to, you know, misogyny. Yeah, and that's what they are saying when we teach. They hate alpha males. They love alpha females and effeminate men. You understand? That's what they like. The law says, no, you better prophesy against them because they, they, we must set our face against them because they prophesy out of their own heart, meaning out of their feelings. What they are saying is not biblical. It's based on how they feel. The Lord don't care about that. Okay, go ahead. And prophesy thou against them. Meaning teach against them. Teach against their imaginations that they have in their minds. You understand? Give me that in 2nd Ezra 15. I'm almost done. 2nd Ezra chapter 15. Because the Lord, he taught, he taught us about that. He said we must prophesy against them. 2nd Ezra 15 and verse 1. Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. Come on. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of the, the words of prophecy, mm -hmm. which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So what we prophesy is the words that the Lord put in our mouth because it's written in the book. We read it as it is written. We teach it the way it's written. Upon precept. Next verse. Come on. And cause them to be written in paper. Read. For they are faithful and true. So the words that the Lord will put in our mouth that he caused them to be written in paper, which is the Bible in these last days to help us, it says what? They are faithful and they are true. Read. Fear not the imaginations against thee. You see that thing? He says, don't fear the imaginations of these black women against us because they prophesy out of their own heart. The Lord says, prophesy thou against them because the words that I put in your mouth they are faithful and they are true. Read. Let not the in incredulity of them trouble thee. You see that, that thing? speak that, against thee. That what? That speak against thee. The Lord is saying, don't let their, he says, let not the incredulity of them trouble thee. Incredulity meaning lack of belief, meaning faithless. Don't let, don't let their lack of faith trouble you. He says that speak against because they are going to speak against us. But are they speaking against us? No, they are speaking against the Bible. Next verse. Watch this. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So all these unfaithful sisters that will, don't believe in this Bible, the Lord says they're going to die in their unfaithfulness. Because of what? Because their incredulity is in their mind is supposed to trouble us to stop teaching against them like it says in ezekiel we're not gonna stop we're gonna do this until kingdom come now watch this Be and when we do that this is what happens next from the black woman because she's got the accountability of a child watch this give me jeremiah 9 verse 17 jeremiah chapter 9 verse 17 you see me uh me when i see this listen that's when i pay even close attention to the things you are saying watch this Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 17. Read what you got. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 17. Read. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. Consider ye and call for the mourning women. You see that part right there? It says call for the mourning women. 
So whenever you check the black woman, the first thing that they do, they mourn. Hmm. What does that mean? Keep reading. Read on. That they may come mm -hmm. and send for cunning women. That they may come. You see that thing? It says now it says the mourning women. Then it says it says the cunning women. Meaning what? They are crafty. So the thing, the reason why they are how they mourn is a very cunning behavior. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. For thus saith the Lord, behold. No, uh, no, no, verse 18, verse 18. Oh, verse 18. Come on. And let them make haste mm -hmm. and take up a wailing for us. You see that thing? Because when we correct the black women, when we pro-correct our sisters, this is the first thing they do. They cry. It says, and it says what? And take up a wailing for us. That's the first thing that the black woman does. The first thing she does, she'll make excuses, she'll fight and all of that. After she's done all that, she's realized she's not getting away with it and you're not breaking down. That's the next thing that happens. Tears, they will cry. It says, and take up a wailing for us. You see that thing? Go ahead. That our eyes may run down with tears. Mm. And our eyelids gush out with waters. So that they make you emotional. So you don't, you don't use just judgment. You don't judge according to the law, but you judge according to the what? Your eyes, your fleshly eyes. Go ahead. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. A, a voice of hailing, of wailing, meaning of crying, excuses, you understand? Not wanting to take responsibility. Because children, how do take children take responsibility? They just cry. They don't want to correct. They don't want to listen to the correction. They just be crying. So that you, are, you, you, so you leave them alone. Because I see it, my daughters do that. When now it's time for the belt, they be now all, all of a sudden, they are teary eyes. So you stop. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. The belt is coming. You understand? Keep going. How are we spoiled? Mm -hmm. We are greatly confounded. You see that thing? The black woman is spoiled and she's greatly confounded. She's confused because of these doctrines, philosophies that the white man has been teaching her all these years. Right? We are, we are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land. Mm -hmm. Because our dwellings have cast us out. Now watch this. You see, the older women, they do the same thing. They manipulate with tears. They manipulate with sadness. They manipulate with say, oh no, you know, it's not me. Something did this to me. Mm -mm. Someone did this long. Mm -mm. No, somebody did this to me long time ago. No, 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 no. Read verse 20. And when they do that, guess what? They're going to teach their children to do the same thing. Watch the next verse. Verse 20. Go ahead. Verse 20. Mm -hmm. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O ye women. Mm -hmm. And let your ear receive the word of his mouth. Meaning the Bible, the law, read. And teach your daughters wailing. You see that thing? They're going to, they teaching their, their, their children to also use the same manipulative games to do what? Not to take accountability and responsibility for their actions or inactions. Read. And everyone, her neighbor, lamentation. And everyone, her neighbor, lamentation. So now... They be teaching all these kids to also do the same. Because I saw when we, was, when we were teaching in Pretoria, Macedon, guess what was going on? A young daughter, a small child, maybe 13 years old, she was part of that uh, political uh, Christian organization. What a confused group. Guess what? She was, the way she was reasoning, she was reasoning like an old black woman who hates the Bible. She also hated the Bible just like the older women do. You understand? She was telling us we are teaching hate. We are teaching segregation. Where did she get that stuff from? 13 year old, she's saying that stuff. And she rejected the color of Christ in the Bible. You understand? So, guess what? They are teaching their, their daughters. That's why even these young girls, they are very aggressive. They are very masculine. 13 year old, already they've got a masculine spirit on them. You understand? So they are raising monsters. Okay? And guess what? 
they have account they have the accountability of a child because a child for it to be accountable they just cry that's what the black woman does and if they don't cry here's what they do give me proverbs 15 verse 10 proverbs read what you got 15 verse 10 yeah, sir. yeah read proverbs 15 verse 10 I can hear you. Proverbs 15, verse 10. Read that. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 10. Go ahead. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Mm -hmm. And he that hateth reproof shall die. That's what's going on. That's what the, that's the black woman is. As correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Because you are trying to show them, sis, this is how you do things. This is what the scriptures say. This is how you must apply it. No, 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 no. It's grievous. The correction is, is very hard for the black woman to take correction because they've been at ease. That's why Isaiah said what he said. You understand? But Ezekiel said, you must prophesy against them. We must not let their incredulity trouble us. You understand? We must teach them because these words are faithful and true. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 28 verse 5. Proverbs 28 verse 5. Come on. Evil men understand not judgment, mm -hmm. but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Evil men, that goes into evil men, but is also making, is going into the women as well. The women, they also applies to the women. Evil women understand not judgment, they don't understand judgment. That's why when you correct the black woman, sis, you can't dress like that. The Bible says this, sis, you cannot be having sex sleeping around when you are not married because the one is breaking the commandments, repent. You understand? Be a righteous sister. Dress modestly and so forth so you can get a husband. No, I still want to live my life. I don't see anything wrong with it. God looks at my heart. Evil women understand not judgment. You understand? They don't understand the judgment that the Lord has written. But the sister that will seek the Lord, she will understand. Or, okay, I'm wrong. I need to repent. Let's keep it moving. You understand? Jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. Mm-hmm. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. That's the black woman today. She don't want to hear, she will turn her away her ear from hearing the law. They block their ears. He says, even their prayer will be an abomination. But if you teach this to our sisters, they're going to say, not my Jesus. Me, I know my God. I know my God. That's not the God of, that's not my God. I know my God. You see that? So they're to hell with the God of the Bible. That's what they say. They believe in Caesar Bourget. Because Caesar Bourget tells them, God loves you no matter what. But you cannot find that in the scripts. You see that thing? So, so that's, that's, that's the mindset of our sisters. You understand? They, have the, they want the authority of a man. They want, they, have, they, want the, they, they want the advantage of being a woman. But they have their accountability of a child. And that's what we have to work with. You understand? Jezza men are also like that. I mean, there's a next series that's coming for Jezza men. But I'm still dealing with the Jezebel demons. Okay. But I'm going to end the class right here. All praises to the most High God. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Okay. For laying his life down for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye. As often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. 
Amen. 